Stream time! Hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to the the April live. It's the time for live streams, and the time is now. Hold on, I gotta bring my comments up. Oh, there, there we go. Comments are up. That was pretty fluid. I think that was the most fluid delivery I've done of the intro. Uh, welcome, hello, everybody. Let's see who's let's see who's here. Let's start right from the top. Uh, Matt Roden says he smells like beef. Uh, luckily, the live stream does not have. Smell-O-Vision. My Motorcycle Adventures is here, who I remember from the top now. I finally uh, nailed down the person to the name. Uh, hey, Mike. Mike Frames is here. Valk is here. Uh, so Esmond is here. <clears throat> Hold on. I want to bring up... Uh, oh, uh, so Esmond... Uh... No, not Small Man Moto. Slow Eddie. Eddie's uh, in for, allegedly, for our Mother's Day ride. Um, and yes, guys, we're going riding on Mother's Day weekend. Because I got a sweet bike now, so I'm taking it out every chance I get. Uh, who else is here? Land of Sports here. Hey, buddy. Um, Crashy's here. Guys, the whole, the whole gang's here. What an exciting time. Uh, welcome and hello, everybody, uh, to... Oh, there it is. That's I wanted to bring that up, too. The answer is never. 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 Gonna, I'm, I don't... I don't miss it, guys. I was worried I was going to. I don't. So, uh, exciting development in the world of Tall Man Moto. We are also streaming to Instagram, but FYI, Instagram people, if you want to join in on the conversation, uh, head on over to Tall Man Moto on YouTube because the comments don't, like, cross over. So, I'm just I'm just advertising on Instagram that I'm live because I can't because I'm hip meji uh so we've got uh oh and the mother's day ride is going to be over in the cascades um we're doing like a tour tech preview sort of kind of scouting out some stuff so uh email me if you want to drive all the way down just for a weekend um but i don't think you'd probably want it's very far for you so that makes me sad because i want to hang out with you more anyways uh we've got an exciting guest today we're going to talk about a uh, sweet development in my riding life. Uh, as if you don't all know, got a motorcycle. I don't know if I like it yet, so I'm going to have to give you uh, my honest opinion soon. Uh, Sideways Stands here. What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, guys, it's time to bring our guest onto the stage. Um, it's the uh, also tall Matt Roden. 
Um, oh, uh, hey, uh, Matt, uh, Matt, where, uh, sorry, I don't mean to, are you, were you, you were just researching Starbucks destinations or? Uh, yeah, something like that. It's just, yeah, it's, makes sense. It's a, it's a great mm. read. It's the yeah. hundred years of BMW motorcycles. Um, Back when they used to be good. Am I right? Oh, guys, look, I'm dropping the ball already. I'm not even a big Beamer guy or anything. There we go. I don't. <laughs> Gotta update the background. Uh, so who was it? Was it Pete? It might have been Pete. So I put on Instagram that uh, you were the guest. Somebody immediately responded with, that guy rides a 1250 GS, like a 250. Oh, no. To which I had to remind them not to inflate your ego too much. I, I think that was um, that was Ben from uh, from Moto Camp Nerd. Mm. It was. Him and I went. It's time for our first uh, ad break. Um, Everybody, uh, buy yourself some darn tough socks. (laughs) Guys, I'm obsessed with these socks, but we're going to get to that because I didn't think they were going to be good. Okay, so Matt Roden, you you live where, Matt Roden? Um, Where do you live? Who? We're going to, I want everyone, pull up your left hand with me real quick. And we're going to, this is Michigan. And I, I live I live in Michigan. So uh, not the Pacific Northwest that a lot of you guys are from, but uh, it's pretty great. We got, all, we got a lot of sand, a lot of uh, a lot of trees, a lot of beauty. So we don't have the elevation, but we've got lakes. Uh, That's exciting. It, uh, we're working with what we got. Trademark How's the hill climb situation. The hill climb situation. Um, like in what ways? Like, do you have hills at least? Yeah, we have hills. All just flat. No, 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 no. We have we have hills. We have. Oh, I mean, okay. it's it's not going to be like a quarter mile climb up a hill, but we've we've got areas that we can we can get into. I was just riding my little bike, uh, kind of in like a, a more enduro area, and there's a big bowl area that's got some hills that are pretty steep that are fun. And what's that little bike? Um, oh, wait, I told this? myself I was never going to drink the orange Kool-Aid because yeah, I right. hated KTMs for the longest time. And I bought a 450 XCFW. I, s- I still hate KTMs. So do I. I'll I die on this hill. I don't understand the hype. Yeah. Horrible <laughs> bikes. Never buying one. I hate it so much. It's Long-term loan. It's the best motorcycle I've ever had. But mine's a Husky, which is like, uh, so you know how Toyota owns Lexus? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So uh, Huskies are like the functional Lexus of Toyota. So <laughs> might be KTM domed, but it's better. Guys, I'm just, I'm a disgusting, arrogant snob now. Take one out. Take take a an FE 501 out and you will understand. Hey, hey, we're 10 minutes Where? Can you not? Where's Soilsman from? Damn cats. Just east of the cascades he knows about solid way he he is the god of he said you don't you don't even live in the up what's wrong with that there's nothing in the up it's just the up it's the upper peninsula oh i was never good at geography class Uh, no no one is all right so you've got a i already forgot you said 450 right Yep. And yes, how do. tall how tall are you, other tall guy? Me? I think I, I am, still have you beat. I don't I think, think you do. This. I'm 6'4". 6'6", six, 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 thank you. You are? We all know two inches matters. I used to say I was 6'5 for the longest time, and then, you like how I glazed over that comment? When I started working at you, a... Are you, like, measuring yourself with boots on or something? Damn it. Uh, I was actually 6'7 and a half measuring with shoes on and then i had to measure the shoe because i was like i know that's not right there was an inch and a half heel on my dress shoes i don't think that's even right dude these cats are really going at each other they're like oh the live stream started let's fight what are you doing riding motorcycles just play a basketball or something (sighs) shut up all right well that's enough from our guest and (laughs) replaced (laughs) (laughs) oh how tall are you that's the first thing somebody, not like, hello, hi, hey. my name is, just yeah. like, they look up and they're like, how tall are you? And then the mm-hmm. second thing they say is, can you play basketball? Can you grab that for me? Can you grab that for me? You play basketball? Can you grab that for me? <laughs> hey, how's the weather dang, up there? You dang short people and your stupid jokes. Can you guys hear the 
battleground that is my background right now? No. It's, okay, good. Because it's they're really going at it. I fucking hate these cats. Goddamn cats. Who else is here? Uh, Dirty Destinations is here. Steven Statton's here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hattie Matt times two. Because we're both named Matt. It, it was meant to be. Uh, I'd call Cindy's us M squared, but that's my other that's my other friend named Matt. So oh. uh, we can could be Matt cubed to if the, he to the third. Oh, I cubed better. Yeah, yeah, yeah cubed okay. is better. We can join. triangled. Join. Really? No. no oh triangled. wait, we have we have one a triad like uh, oh the God. Deathly Hollows. Yes. Uh, okay. Motorcycles and pancakes is here. Little sports. Ladle Sport makes three mats. There's so many mats. It's really the mat gang right now. Damon's here. Hey, Damon. Um, guys. Oh, my God. I am obsessed with this FE501S. So this is the first live, now that I own it, I've uh, sh shown plenty of bits. I'm Listen, I had the Africa Twin for four and a half years. Three and a half years, four and a half years. Uh, I never would have fathomed that I would get a ticket on it. I don't think I'm going to make it a year. I've already hit 100 miles an hour. Now, to be fair, I just wanted to know. Um, I'm just stupidly uh, crossing all of the curbs and the center stanchions and going up all the inappropriate parking lot hills. It's just so great. It's great everywhere you go. Critter's here. Hey, Critter. Hey, buddy. Doesn't you matter. Start, did you ah. start doing ah. wheelies yet on it? Uh, I can I I can get the front up, but not like consistent ones. And I still bike... am like I'm still weird about it on the trail. It's right. different when you're processing nine different things, and it's like, oh yeah, now I have to pop it up. But I can successfully do it. So now it's now I have like, to do it intentionally. Our bikes are close to this. They're pretty similar. I mean, yours has the fancier suspension on it. And this, but like frame wise, it's pretty similar. So I'm just. Are you going to share, or do we have to wait? Share what? Wait, what am I sharing? Like your 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 rundown, other than it's cool. Uh oh, like the full in depth about it. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for asking on my live where I'm supposed to be interviewing you. So well, I can segue it into something. <laughs> No, that was good. That was a solid let's talk about me moment. Cause That's fine. Yeah. This is I'm an observer. Live, Matt Roden. Okay, so uh, the full rundown. I finally, if anybody is somehow unaware, made the purchase and I got the 2020 Husqvarna FE501S that I went and did a test ride video for Ever Power Sports for and ended up falling in love. Um, it's got a Scott steering stabilizer on it. It's got drop pegs. It has the... True North Moto subframe support. So the one downside to this bike, which doesn't matter to me now, is that it is the worst, shittiest subframe that's ever been on an FE501. Um, they are very prone to break, apparently, under loaded weight. So the owner before me was about the same size, according to the owner of Everett Power Sports. So the guy set it up and built it for me, but he also threw the True North subframe, subframe supports on so I can load it up with luggage and not have to worry about that. Um, I will say I'm really impressed with the tire combo that it's got on it. So it's a K60 Ranger in the front and a TKC80 in the rear. And I have not had the front wash out on me once. I was going to ask you if you wanted, if you were thinking you wanted to go to more of like a, a motocross or enduro style tire. I don't think so being the primary. So like right now, so the long-term plan is I'm going to pick up, I was going to replace the Africa Twin regardless, right? I wanted to do right. the Tiger 900 Rally Pro, but financially two bikes is just not like I... I want to get into like a real house. I want to do a couple of things before I focus on spending money on two bikes. So then my thought process started really coming down to like, I've definitely hit a point with the twin where I'm just, I'm comfortable off road, but it's just so freaking heavy. And I know I don't want to hear it. I just, man, listen, let me, let me ride my ride guys. I just didn't want to deal with all that goddamn weight. So it was time to go light. So I was already looking for a 250 or a 300L, or preferably a Rally. 
and started talking to Everett Power Sports and the friggin' awesome people over there. And they had just had their marketing person leave. Um, so they were like, okay, well, this is like the perfect time. Yes, come in, do some test ride videos for us. So we're starting to do some of that, uh, just review videos. And they've got a they got a lot of FE 501s, 2023s and 2024s on the, the – like they just got sent a bunch of them. I think they've got like eight or nine units, which is quite a bit for a dealership to have at one time on the showroom floor. So they're like, well, take this used one out and go take it out for the day, put some miles on it, put a review out, and then we can just attach that to all of our bikes. So I took it out, and as I'm sure most of you have seen, I was obsessed uh, so I came back and I was like, well, you're not going to sell it. And they were like, why not? I was like, cause I'm going to buy it. So sold the twin, got the money, went and bought it, went out, I guess two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago now, uh, Friday on my own and rode a day on it and actually got to do like dumb things because it was now my bike and I could be okay with dropping it. And then I went out Sunday with, uh, that Yahoo small man moto and uh also mike and got to like actually push the bike a little bit and dude it's just it's so good like it's just it's so light it's so easy it's responsive that steering stabilizer is incredible guys if you don't have one on your bike highly recommend it so the four service road we went down had they were like i guess like repaired patches of gravel but it was like big ass gravel and like soft deep gravel and it would go from like hard pack old gravel to just these soft patches and it just right through like I didn't feel a difference in the handlebars although you know it's there so highly 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 recommend that steering stabilizer this one's a Scots which is apparently like la ti da which I have a Husqvarna now so of course my parts are all la ti da anyways it's freaking great and I love it and I don't regret it at all and then we were on a back road and I was like well I just want to know like I just want to know so I just went until it hit triple digits and I was like that's it that's as fast as I want to go but it still wanted to go so loaded up with luggage that thing's still going to do 7580 on the interstate if I have to be in that situation so it's it is it is already known as but I will second, it is definitely seems to be, there is a reason that it is considered the king of the dual sport world. Do you? Solid. I love it. That one, that one has an ECU on it, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. It is has a, a, yeah, it's got an EJK tuner on it. I haven't touched oh, it at yeah, all. Oh, yeah. I think you told me that. I need to figure out the set it'd be really funny if it's on like the most conservative setting and then i put it on like normal mode and it's like Brock! and i die <laughs> no you'll be fine no it's pretty does great it have, does it have bar risers mm -mm. no so we talked about this and i was thinking about putting like half inch maybe one inch bar risers and then you gave me the explanation uh which you're going to give again as to why bar risers on a dual sport are not a good idea Go. Well, it's it's not that bar risers are a bad idea. Well, you just have to. It's not a good I, idea. I I think there's more to it, and I can attest for myself. There's more to it than just I'm tall. I need bar risers, right? So the way I came to this conclusion is going to sound kind of weird, and we're going to go on an ADHD tangent story, which yes. most of you are accustomed to with our host here. Um, mm -hmm. They know what they're getting into. But I had gone to get fitted for golf clubs and I was like dead convinced with this guy that I needed extended length shafts. Like oh, I was right. dead convinced <laughs> because I'm, I'm six foot four, right? These golf clubs are built for guys that are like five foot eight. And then it's kind of the same with the bikes we ride. They're built for guys that are like five, eight, five, 10, 180 pounds. They're not built for a big, tall guy. For some people that's, that's tall. Five, 10, five, 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 five. Really tall. Yeah. It's really <laughs> tall for some people. Yeah. That's, that's, that's tall. Um, Wait, did you and say they, five, five? Five, 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 one seventy. Holy guacamole. Poor little buddy. Anyways, so golf clubs That's, for uh, uh, tall people. According yeah, to so, people. so I'm, I'm convinced that I need these because all the forms and everything are saying it, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy that's fitting me, he looks at me, he goes, you don't, you don't need extended length clubs. And I just looked at him kind of puzzled. What do you mean? I'm tall. 
goes, well, yeah, right? you have you have a normal wrist to floor height. So from the distance from the ground to my wrist fits within the normal um, the normal range for regular length clubs. So then when someone was talking to me, oh, you need to put bar risers on your bike, I thought to myself the same thing. Well, do I need to actually? The bikes fit for, an, you know, a wide range of heights of people. Mm-hmm. I've been riding every single bike I've ever had without bar risers or taller bars, and I've never really had an issue. So Critter Motors, you have arms like a gorilla. Okay, maybe I do. Um, my fiance is 5'10", and when we hold hands, I kind of have to pick my arms up off the ground because I'm dragging my knuckles. But um, no, I don't, I don't use bar risers, believe it okay. or not. I and will I want to say s- once once I started like so going from the adventure bike thing, which yes, you should have the same sort of position doing off road stuff, but I was lazy, right? Right. When I started like really like focusing on that attack position and the like torque uh-huh. ass situation, it got a lot easier. Yeah, My it's biggest, it's I uncomfortable think, at first. Yeah, well, it's because it's still physical work. It's not it's not easy, you know. No. Twerking all this luggage back there. So I still don't understand why I have to shake my ass while I'm moving, but I guess it helps balance the bike, so that's fine. Uh, is small man usually riding behind you when that happens? Sure is. Yeah. That's kind of what I was <laughs> figuring. Yeah, that's why it's yeah. It's, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You get it. Uh who said Takamoto for the they already sent me I sent him an email. Ladle Sport said Takamoto for the EJK settings. I sent him an email. Dude, within a day, he sent me a PDF. So I just have to go out there and push the buttons and count flashy lights. And that's probably not going to go well because it requires paying attention. But I'll get it figured out. <clears throat> you want me to jump back in on my rant? Oh, it wasn't done? Keep going. No. Okay, so I think most of us know bar risers push the bars closer towards you, which for a shorter rider, that would be, you know, that's a pretty good idea. Mm-hmm. Um who didn't someone make a video once going on like a bar riser rant? Uh, I, I, Brett Tax, probably, Brett Brett Tax did this. He had a whole tall person video, and this is one of the things he said too. Was right. don't so, get bar risers for exactly what you're about to say. Well, it's not even don't get them. I guess if you need them, sure, but you're gonna take yourself out of a position that's more of an attack position, ready to go. Because if you're just standing straight, straight up with your arms kind of locked, you mm-hmm. can't really. You can't really control the bike. So then people's first inclination is, well, okay, it's too close to my chest, right? So if you put the bars too close to your chest, then your head is over the bars, which is going to make you super unstable, just as it is. So what most people will do if they do bar risers is they'll push it. Oh, someone just said it. Push the bars up and forward at the same time. Sideways stand. Uh, I would be very keen or quick to say that your bike is going to handle like dog crap the second you do that, because your pivot point of where your bars are, are now in front of the pivot point of the triple clamp. So I, I, so I will say I had, so I had rocks risers, which allowed you to do exactly that. They've got the, the pivot in the middle, right? Right. But I would be curious. I would actually be really curious to run this for like six months on the stock bars and then throw some rocks risers on there because I, yeah, I get the, the like the dynamics of it. And when you're on the smaller bike, you're pushing a lot harder and faster and right. your, your movements matter a lot more, right? Which I was not doing on the twin. So I don't think that mattered, but I would, yeah, I a hundred percent, I would be curious to see, yeah, listen, let me, let me actually bring him on with content. Did you ever see me move fast? off-road if it wasn't wide open gravel on the twin no 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 not no i was not moving at a speed that i think input really mattered Hmm. i guess it depends what you're riding then i'm saying like loose stuff the last thing you want is your bars in front of the like the neck where you're where you're you know where your triple camps triple clamps rotate um i'm a mechanic so the easiest way to describe that would be caster. Caster is just the angle where your suspension goes through the knuckle and meets the contact patch of the tire. So if, you know, I have too much caster in it, the the wheel's just going to sit there and shake and flop around. 
for a bike, you'd put more rake in it. But if you're going to put your pivot point right here, your tires down here, it's, it's just going to shake like a demon. That's my rant. I'll, uh, I'll pick up I had this rock risers in like six months and I'll I see this if there's a difference. Well, more thought out science. in my head. Do it for science. Do it for me, for anyone. <sighs> Matt Roden, I will do this thing for you. I know. I'm still nervous. <laughs> I don't, I don't disagree with you. Also, what a great name, Moist Oregon. Moist Oregon. Yeah, so uh, 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 I'm just uncomfortable. Moist, we were talking about <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about uh, arm to torso length at the very beginning of this and having, uh, I think they were referenced as gorilla arms um, yeah. to why like it kind of cancels out the need for the bar risers because your arms are so much longer and they end up in kind of the same place that a shorter persons with shorter arms would be. So I just but look yeah. at it as your, your height from the ground to your wrists. That's, uh, so, <clears throat> that's the way I've always looked at it. So by the way, if you're watching over on Instagram and you would like to actually join the conversation, uh, head on over to YouTube because the comments do not translate over. So just an FYI to you Instagram watchers. Cause you know, I'm a multi-platform streamer now doing big things in life. Uh, Damon says he's team anti risers. Too many variables I mean, don't, go against them. Not too wrong. many reasons for them. I'm not against risers. <laughs> I think if you have a need for them, like, and I don't want to say in a like a really pompous way, like a legitimate need, but I feel like most of the time it's just the sales department or the the parts department trying to get a markup. Or people have always ridden a bike with them because they were told they need them. So every time they get a new bike, they just slap another pair on and, oh, this thing handles better. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, Carl Carl says ape arms. The cruiser guys use ape hangers. I'm just going to throw ape hangers on, and then I don't need bar risers because the bars are taller. So hmm. it makes sense to me. Hmm. Just hmm. going down the highway on my, my 501. Hmm. Guys, 100 miles an hour. It was insane. So small. Kilometers an hour, I mean. Have you any... ridden a big bike since you got your 501? Mm -mm. So I well, so I did. So I did the 501 test ride, and then I hopped back on the twin at the end of that day. That did was a feel, weird adjustment. It was. Did it feel like no matter what you were doing, you couldn't ride the bike right? Yeah. No. It was just everything demanded so much more input. Oh my gosh. I had this past Saturday, I went out and did, I don't know what it was like 40 miles on the dirt bike. And then the Sunday after I pulled the GS out and went to go ride like some forest roads and some quad trails. And I had no clue what I was doing on that thing. And usually yeah, it, if I get on my GS, I'm like, I'm right at home. I feel comfortable. And I was just. Yeah. Cause you've got, so you've, you have a YouTube channel, right? I wasn't channel? gonna plug it. Yeah, I need to get back to why not? Videos. That's well, the whole. Well, we kind of had this conversation, and it. You and I, have, we agree on the same thing. We're writers first, kind of filmers. Well, yeah, second. but okay. So I say all that to say, you have videos of you on that friggin' twelve fifty, just like no, it's ass not. Down. It's not a twelve fifty. It's is a twelve hundred. I am oh not. God, I whatever. am not in the tax bracket Jesus of Christ. like Moto Camp nerd. Okay. I can't afford the extra 50 CC. Yeah, that is an extra like five grand for, for a Beamer. <laughs> you could be like just that. a common 1200 or for $4,000 more, we can sell you 36 more CCs that we call a 1250. But no, you, you ride that you ride like, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know that I could put a lot of people blindly in that category, but uh, Kyle from uh, what is it? Back, 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 back country adventures. I think is his channel. Is that the uh, guy out of Idaho? Yeah, okay. dude. I, I did a thing in Idaho with him and watching him move on his Africa twin when he had it off road was terrifying. That dude is <laughs> so fast off-road he's an insane rider but i'd say all that to say i 
I would damn near by that single track video you sent me put you in almost the same category because yeah, you ah, were you were throwing dude. it like a two fifty. I don't know about that. There were some guys at uh, Whale and Wayne that were they had competed in the GS Trophy that I I couldn't even get close to, which it kind of lit a fire under my. Can I say can I say that? Have you not noticed how much I'm swearing this whole time? Okay, yes, yeah, yes. You um, can say you can say bottom in an inappropriate way. Okay, uh, I want to make you uncomfortable. So I they had a um, see how we dodged actually saying it. Hold on, let me get there. So there, there's a rally down in Ohio, which I know everyone's like, oh, Ohio. And I'm going to try not to butcher saying Appalachia. That's how we say it, right? Appalachian. Appalachian Appalachia. Appalachia. Eh, whatever. Appalachian. Appalachian Mountains. That's what So it like is. the last Saturday, they, they did like a, like a skills course, like a trials course. And I was dead set that I was going to do really good at it. And I did very... <laughs> very poorly because i was just like i gotta go i gotta go fast i gotta get through this instead of going slow and i was watching these guys that have you know competed for the u.s for the gs trophy and i was like man that chaps my ass that they can do that and i can't so probably the next two years i'm just gonna spend training to see if i can go down to the gs qualifier and at least give it a try um that's nuts I like doing that kind of stuff. And so Esmond wants to know, do you find that Matt, this question is for you. Uh, do, you do you find, find the tail tel- lever yeah, with that. less feedback than standard forks? My 07 is riding like a couch, even with track. Oh, soils, man. Don't Wait, say that. I me? just, what the hell's a tell, tell, tell that. So thing. here, let me pull out my <laughs> diagram here. Oh, perfect. Look, it's actually useful. It's not just good for a bit. So the, the GS and the RT is that the wishbone different- suspension? Yep. So like, okay. we'll use this RS as an example. It looks like it's got a control arm in there. It's that's the actual suspension. Yeah. So you have yep. a single, I don't know if you can see the single shock between the fork tube, but the fork tubes just kind of act like guide tubes. There's no, to my knowledge, there's no springs in them. Oh, 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 sorry. Sorry guys. <laughs> there's a good oh, there diagram. Go. Hold on. Yeah, let yeah, me yeah. move me. Hold on. Hold it there. Hold on. Let me move me. Yeah, so the f- the fork tubes just Neat. act like a guide tube. Um, Who'd have thought that actually would have been useful? <laughs> not me. Okay, so do you find that there's less feedback than uh, standard forks? Um, yes and no. You don't. So, like, you know the dive feeling you get when you mash the front brake? Yeah, you don't get that with that. Yeah, a GS, like, doesn't do that. But the thing that's... I've noticed more is if you come into something like a pothole or a rut or a log or something, right? When you hit that, there's like basically no rebound. It just collapses. And I'm worried now that he just said, even with tractive suspension, because I'd found a, a killer of a deal on marketplace for some, some tractive stuff, which is really nice stuff they're the ones that make it for tour tech tour tech puts their name on it and i don't know if they do maybe they do different valving for tour tech um but as far as like less feedback i don't know part of me just thinks that that's having a 19 inch front tire which i hated at first but i i love it and that's why i love the gs is i i have a 19 inch front for riding on the street um which i don't push the bike really hard but i don't like how a 21 feels when i'm going down the, the open road yeah sorry my motorcycle adventures i didn't know i didn't know it was gonna be educational either i almost tuned out myself so that was my bad oh no <laughs> oh no pnw adv moto hey buddy uh it says the lego bmw gs metal has uh model has te- tell a lever tell a lever tell a lever suspension too yeah have you to ridden a gs cr- no i have not and i never will don't do it. They're the they're the final boss. Mm. No, I'm dude. Out of my FE five hundred one S. So. No, I I know, but also if, they're not going to be as fast as the Tiger nine hundred Rally Pro. So, but how fast do you really need to go? Um, that's a dumb question because when you're on a back road and you're like, mm, whew, you can. <coughs> oh, the this isn't about this isn't about my, top end my, speed. This is about like twenty to ninety speed. 
And oh, dude, that you'd love a GS then. Stupid. No, shut up. It's dumb. Those are you dumb. would. Those are they are. Nope. All right, that's enough of that. And he's kicked out and banned forever. <laughs> I am never going. Hey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying they're really torquey and they're really fun. Yeah, that's fine. I'm never going to sit on one because you know what? I already fucked up and bought a Husqvarna and have to eat shit at Tour Attack when people see me and they're like, ha 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 ha. And we never thought we'd ride a Harley either. In real life about what? So we never thought we'd ride a Harley either. No, that was no, no. He rides a Harley. Different, no, different conversation. I objectively shut did that. Down. Shut it down. Shut it down. Instantly hated ninety three percent of everything about it. You that Pan like your... Am is garbage. Yeah, As is evident, they're not bad, but they're not in any way good. I, don't... I think they have their place. I don't like their stock bar risers that are like bar risers on a backcountry snowmobile or their foot like, pegs that are like weirdly three quarters of an inch too far back or their stupid kickstand that sits in the weirdest place or their weird tinny chinese cheap feeling fucking motor that like sounds like it's gonna fall apart accelerating but it does go fast so soils them. man i agree we're going to get him away from the safety of how he feels safe Two strokes and twelve hundred GS adventures. Good no, idea. I'll never, I'll never get a two stroke. Hundred percent. And here's why: I have why? nothing bad to say about two strokes. I have no fucking intention of having to mix oil and gas every time I fill it up. You don't that, have to. They're they're oil injected now. Oh my god. Well, fuck. <laughs> I don't know if you'd like a, a two-stroke. I don't know if you'd like the idea of no engine braking. Oh, I maybe don't think you I'd would. Like that. Yeah, maybe. That's why I'm gonna ride one. I, yeah, that's why I ditched mine and went back to the four-stroke, the old thumper. To be fair, I never said I hated Husky. I said I hated KTM. So I could still ride this fucking bandwagon out. Okay. Okay, guys. Ready? It's not even a paid advertisement. Because all he's paying me to do is, well, he didn't pay me, to be fair. He sent me, to, full disclosure, the Moto Camp Nerd sent me free socks. And he was like, hey, I want you to do some work. And I was like, okay. He's like, what do you know about darn tough socks? And I was like, I hear people like them. He's like, okay, I'm going to send you three, four pairs. He didn't tell me that at the time. He just said he was going to send me socks. And I want you to do some reviews on them, be honest. And I was like, okay. I had very negative opinions, less than educated, opinions about wool socks. I was like, that sounds gross. My feet are going to get sweaty. People say that it wicks the moisture away. That's not true. Guys, I wore, so I am on my second pair. So I'm sure if you follow my Instagram, you saw my first post about the first like two or three days in a pair of socks. I went a full week in those. I'm on like a full week in the second pair and they still don't stink. At the end of every day, my feet are dry. They are insane. You guys, if you are riding a motorcycle for more than four hours, you need a pair of these damn darn tough socks. They're insane. Absolutely love them. So I'm willingly plugging, go to motocampnerd.com and go buy a pair and try them out. They're $30. But if you don't know, Darn Tough has a lifetime friggin' warranty and can attest. Hold on. Let's bring him back up. From experience, if you wear a hole in these friggin' socks, they replace them for free. Yes. They'll get like, they'll send you you send them in, they check them out, they they give you a gift certificate to buy another pair of, and probably a little bit more than what you actually spent on them when you bought them. Every sock in my closet is darn tough now. Yeah, they're friggin' amazing. I have never my feet are cleaner and drier than I think literally they've ever been in the last two weeks that I've started. Because I have I have sweaty feet. I'm sorry, guys. It's gross. I had jungle rot when I, I was do. in the Navy. It was so gross. I have sweaty feet, too, and I'm intrigued by these socks. So this is going to sound weird. But Have what you do never they... had darn tough what? socks? Oh, dude, you no. need to get a pair. What go order a pair like? from... Go or, what are they? Oh, okay. So what do they feel like? Great question. Yeah, like, so are they... The like, second... Can you compare them to like a, a big brand that I would know? Because, like, I wear Nikes, Under Armour, and Smart Wool. I don't know about Smart Wool, but uh, okay. so I've been wearing Dickie socks for 
decades now because I'm old and I can say things like that. Uh, so I've always done like cotton socks. And okay. so I did, he sent me the ski snowboard, which realistically, if you have like a uh, tall, if you're wearing like tall MX boots or tall adventure boots, I'd recommend those because right. they go all sure. the way up the, the calf. Mm -hmm. So everything stays wool covered and everything stays dry. Um, but I put uh, these work pairs. So I think he sent me two different ones because I have, I have one work pair on right now. I threw this work pair on, which is like thickly lined in the the foot i guess so that it doesn't wear as hard it's like, Dude, it's like it's i like fucking padded. slid my foot into that thing and i was like oh my god it was just it was so like cushy and soft and my feet are they're not is it like I, a compression sock no. like does your i'm guessing your foot doesn't walk around in them it's like second skin yes in the sense that it Dude, doesn't, i'm sorry like, i'm really loose yes but it's not like a it's not a compression sock. You said compression, and I've worn. Right. I don't remember how or well, why. Well, I'm not talking about like, diabetes socks. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> talking had about a pair those. of diabetes socks. Yeah, I'm. I'm not talking about like you know squeeze the blood back up your legs. Okay. But like they no. they they give They're your tight. feet a good hug. Whole yeah. week of wear, and they have not stretched out. That was one of the other things I wanted to test out. I was like, in a week, like the sock is going to come like loose and so no, dude, they're they're freaking amazing. Like, I'm obsessed. I have been cornering people at work to tell them about darn tough socks. Not because Motocamp Nerd sent me these to test, but just because I fell in love with them. So I'm 100% telling you guys, go check it out, motocampnerd.com. Go buy one pair. And if you're only going to buy one pair as like a riding, I recommend, I really like the ski snowboards because they come all the way up your... Um, your shin all the way up your calf your calf thank you so it's it's covering the whole boot so as things get sweaty so if you don't know let me explain to you how these work because i went and went and did the adhd thing and learned about how the hell are these not stinking after a week's worth of wear so wool Marino on its own wool. is moisture wicking so it's pulling the sweat off of your skin merino wool which is what these darn tufts are made of merino is antimicrobial so if you don't know about sweat and it sounds like a stupid st statement but sweat itself when it first comes out of your body it doesn't stink nope uh, bacteria like attaches itself to the sweat and then you start stinking so antimicrobial socks the wool is sucking out the the sweat from your skin and then the 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 merino is uh, preventing the bacteria from getting to the sweat that's now in the sock, so they don't stink. So you can wear them on, say, you know, doing the BDR. You can bring two pairs in case one gets wet. But realistically, you could get away with one pair for a whole week and not need to change socks. And if you leave them out in the sun, it's like extra uh, bacteria killing. Cause science, science, guys. So, anyways, freaking guys, go just go buy one pair, one pair, and try them out. I'm telling you, I am literally planning on replacing. I'm gonna buy like eight pairs of these, so that I can not wear socks for a week at a time just to not be a gross human. But I could, I could have two pairs of these and live for them in them forever. They're freaking great. Go buy these freaking socks, guys. All right, that's it. That was a very not one minute commercial. I didn't even see it as a commercial. I I was genuinely curious on those things. I I am fascinated by the science behind Marina Wall. I think well, that's I've, so cool. I've seen a lot of. Um, I had a feeling Ben was behind it. A lot of people have been talking about these socks, so I wanted to know. No full disclosure. He sent me some to review, and he was like, "Be honest. Like, if you don't like them, that's fine." Maybe don't make commercials for me because I'm trying to promote them, but like be honest with sure. me if you don't like them. And I was like, well, okay, good, because I'm never gonna like do things and not be honest because that's it's a dick way to live. Four days in on that first pair, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. And every day I was like, like looking for the stink. It smells like a shoe, but it doesn't smell like a stinky shoe. It doesn't smell like my typical gross socks after a day and a half. 
Yeah, Steve Stanton's Steve Stanton's he's he he gets my sock commercial. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm liking. He, they're like smart wools, but they actually last, which is that's good mm-hmm. because the smart wools I wear when I ski and I've been wearing them when I ride my bike, they they don't last very long. They're well, awesome, but they're- darn tough. Motocampner.com. Go ben, if you're listening, please send me some socks. He's right on the cusp of being able to go full time, so I'm excited to I be know. able to add to his promotions. Also, guys, we made it 48 minutes in. Small man, take over. It's the first pee break. Dude, that guy pees <laughs> a lot. <laughs> he's uh, he's well hydrated. <laughs> you ever go right? Riding- I- can I He's, let it be known for everyone that's watching is he did this to me like what was it three weeks ago when we were going over like oh what's your whole spiel on bar riser she's like yeah hold on I gotta pee and he was yeah. proud of how long he made it yeah, yeah 45 minutes that's a long one <laughs> but yeah no and he doesn't give me any heads up that he's gonna do this so it's like just, I'm just gonna walk off. Hmm. All right. So, what do you do for a living, Matt? What do I do? Yeah. I fix trucks. I mean, uh, oh man, I don't even know what to call it now. I started as just doing diesel at the Ford dealer I'm at, and um, then we started doing a lot of other stuff. So you could call it like a diesel slash slash commercial truck technician at a Ford dealer. Um, Hey, small man, you're my moderator. How do I kick somebody out of the live stream as a watcher? You can mute them. Is that what you mean? Yeah, whatever. That's fine. Either way, whatever, you know, not that I would specify anybody specifically. Nobody in particular. um, Not anybody in particular, but just specifically maybe just one person. I I was just wondering if you knew how to do that feature. Anyways. you You can mute them, but I think that's a good idea, Critter. Yeah. No. Hey, wait. Hold on. And banned. <laughs> You're out too. <laughs> oh my god, guys! I love it so much. Oh. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm, nice. I'm gonna have to go back and look. I think my uh, my youngest was coming over, so he's probably peeking in the window. Okay, we'll get Ooh. out of here. Ooh. Oh, uh, guys. Sense. Hold on. Oh, I see what's happening. Okay. Let me make it. They're doing it all it? wrong. What is happening right now? Hashtag do what you want. 501 uh, giveaway. This is how I know he he actually watches all my things. <laughs> sweet pork. <laughs> <laughs> We're not giving away sweet pork. We're not giving away a 501. <laughs> Husqvarna, if you're watching this in, down the line in the future, I'll happily give away one of your bikes. Sponsor me. Pay for all my parts. Send me all the parts for free because, God damn it, I'm going to have to do an oil change every 1,200 friggin' miles. To be fair, KTM sucks. I didn't know. <laughs> KTM's dumb. I did not know. KTM's the worst. That, uh, like, my bike has 1.2 quarts of oil in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course, I'm going to have to change the oil more often, but, like, uh, what an 890 or whatever it is, shouldn't have changed it that often. Stupid KTM sucks, but Husqvarna is dope. It's I'm gonna have same. to do an oil change at some point going to or coming back from Get Lost Find Yourself up on North Vancouver Island. Just do it halfway, yeah. Basically, do it when, do it when you're done up there. <laughs> See, Critter, this is why you should have jumped in because what a great BC Ferries joke. I'm definitely going to have time all of a sudden waiting for the BC Ferries to do an oil change. Sons of bitches. God damn, they're the worst. Make sure you have like aluminum foil or something with you so you don't get oil all over the frame. Or, oh, oh, that's smart. I was just going to wipe it down after. Oh, that's you way could. smarter. No, that's but that's way you can smarter. Use it to just kind of direct just wrap it some into aluminum foil around it. Very clever. You're a smart if guy. You keep the oil in your sock until you get back. You will be okay. <laughs> yeah, it's moisture wicking. I don't know if it works Valkyrie, on. Oil. I know. Oh, hey, who highlighted that? Don't put me on blast, guys. I know. That's why. Listen, I I saw the giveaway comment. That's why I stopped doing giveaways because 
I have ADHD and I have a backlog and I don't want to give more things away until I fulfill my backlog because I'm an asshole and I'm sorry and I love you all and you're gonna get it. I just have to remember to do it. All right, well, our guest is disinterested, so let's just get him out of here. No, I'm just kidding. Dude, I don't want to say what I... I did something really naughty. You actually gave away my bike? Uh, no. Oh, okay. (laughs) No. Hold on, I gotta go check my garage real quick. Okay. Uh, okay, let's tune back into the comments, because while everybody else is paying attention, I have not. Um, I was gonna say, do you want more tall guy talk Ooh. hey uh b- by the way everybody for ooh, see <laughs> if i show up to giant loop i'm not sure if i'm going yet for no particular reason <sighs> bring stickers to tour attack people so the one thing that i 100 have decided that i want to do with this bike is if there's plastic space put a sticker on it because I don't give a shit about the graphics that are on it. And I think it'd be really cool to have a bike that's covered in other people's stickers. So I'm not saying send me stickers because that sounds like work and I have to respond to emails and stuff. But if I see you at an event, maybe Giant Loop, no specific reason why I might or might not go. Definitely Tour Tech because I have my ticket. Uh, I want to put your sticker on my bike. Damn it, Cindy. I know. We just talked about how I have to get this stuff out. Can we not roast me on my own live? I know. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm the worst. I'm going to get caught up. It's going to happen. I promise. Who's entering? Oh, Lucy. Wait, hold on. Did we start giving away Lucy? All right. We're giving away uh, 250. You have to go up to Vancouver Island to, to get it. Enter. Get out of here. Um, we are. Hey, at... um, this just popped in my head because it's how my brain works. Did you Go. listen to that podcast I sent you? Yes, it was much more indirect. And yes, guys, we're going to be really general because we were talking about a we were talking about a podcast that may or may not have had uh, opinions about some people that we both joint know so we're going to be general but he asked so now i'm going to respond it was much less directly stated than i anticipated it to be oh but you knew who he was talking about obviously (laughs) yes did you send it to him no because it was so indirect that it wasn't even like i couldn't even like poke the troll like now okay yeah i was like ah he's just gonna glaze over it and be like i think he would have picked up on it well, yeah, because he kind of obsesses about things like that. But okay, anyways. Um, anyways, uh, I'm a tall back guy. To the live stream. <laughs> He's a tall guy. <laughs> Frank J. <Jake>. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing, guys? Who's doing what? Who's uh, who's going to Giant Loop? And I'm not, not doing it. I'm not, not I'm not me. focusing. I'm just curious. Well, yeah, you're in Michigan. Well, I Critter, are you doing giant loop this year? Are you making that trek down? I made this decision to propose to my girl. So we're getting married this year. Oh, I thought so... you were about to tell us about the proposal. I was like, damn, hopefully she's not paying attention to you being on this live. No. No, I did that when we were in Germany a couple months ago. Um, Have you been to Giant Loop before? Me? Yeah. No. No, I didn't think so. I just, you made it, you were, okay, listen, you were leading that conversation like, well, this year it just makes sense. Well, there were, I wanted to go do, get on ADV Fest in South Dakota. I wanted to go back to Whale and Wayne in Ohio so I could hang out with Ben. Um, Ben, which Ben? uh the ben. the hobbit ben not the wookie ben um oh yeah, yeah. moto camp nerd not yep, yep not dork okay got yeah. it yeah moto ah, camp. hobbit not wookie <laughs> i've been i've been trolling <laughs> i've been trolling the hell out of how, everything is he not how tall is he you've never met ben i've never no i've never met him in person um 
I wish he I had did a, a live, but he was sitting I, the whole time. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of him and I. I, I, I don't. I don't want a three foot Christmas tree. He was sitting next to. I didn't even know. It, it, oh, he's in here. He's five five. Wow. Oh. Yeah. I was did he say, see my you plug? And I, you and I must both have five a foot five. Up. Listen, well, Ben, you just showed up or just commented. I'm. I got you. We're talking about these damn darn tough socks. These. Yeah, darn, we, darn damn tough. Damn darn. We did tough. like a 10 minute commercial for darn tough for you. Dude, they're so good. I'm so 26 inch inseam. Don't you have like a 29 inch inseam? Me. Little yes. fella? Yep. And how tall are you? You're 5'5? Five, five? Stop disappearing. Jesus. Yeah, 5'5. Five, 5'5, five, 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 29 inch so inseam. You have on longer head. legs than old Motocam nerd. You're a freak. Anyways. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect when I was at this rally in Ohio because I roll up to the Moto Camp Nerd tent, or he he's got like a, a trailer that's like a rolling storefront, and it's it's super cool. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I'm not trying to be a dick, but I just thought he was going to be taller. <laughs> that's funny. Well, no, because I knew that he rides like a 1250 GS, so I'm like. You know, most people that are shorter, not a twelve hundred, a twelve fifty. He can afford. He's got that nerd money, and yeah, I don't. He's got that nerd money. He's got the nerd money, and I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. If I, I can really, do some rallies this year, I will. Um, they're Tortec, supposedly, uh, dude. That's so far. It's not that far. We did me. the math. I think it's a four day drive for me. I would. I was going to say I would venture to guess that's a solid three days. So yeah, four makes sense. So instead, um, anyone that follows the BDR films has probably seen the name Sterling Noreen. And f or if you follow the, the motorcycle travel channel, um, they're going to be scouting for the Michigan BDR somewhat over the next couple of years. So we'll probably just do that this year. We'll, um, oh, okay. He's, so he's, I'm just saying he's from Michigan. So I, like so, this yeah, is going to so be a, a a cool one. We for briefly, for us. Are you are you going to be in not, that? I doubt it. But one oh, of the okay. guys, one of the guys that I ride with, um, as far as I know from talking with him, he's on <clears throat> the team or whatever you want to call it that's putting mm -hmm. the route together. So we'll probably ride that. I will say mm -hmm. the one. The, the one thing, thing is, like, I, dude, it's Michigan. So anyone that's coming to it, bring the knobbiest tire you have. Is it muddy out there? No, it's just a lot. Dude, the the lower peninsula, basically from the border all the way to, like, it, it's just sand. Oh. But that's a lot of, like, the forest roads and the quad trails, which I don't think a lot of his route is going to have. Um Okay. We'll see. There'll, there'll definitely be some expert sections, and there's a hill climb. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I should look it up for you. The one it's, hill climb in Michigan? No, no. There's some really good ones. This one, it's it's like an ORV scramble area. And oh. they'll do, they'll do Dope. like, have you ever seen the, like the sand dragsters? It'll be like a Jeep that's stretched out with these monster oh, paddle yeah, yeah, tires. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll do that up this hill and we were talking about it's like do we dare include that because that could be kind of fun a big bike will make it up it you're just pinned leaning back all the way Dude, that sounds terrifying on a giant bike but i do it on the fe501s guys yes. i'm so obsessed with this bike i love it so yes. much i was gonna go out uh so <clears throat> Is he still? Yeah, yeah. He, he was. He was. I was just about to pen his comment. So Mike Ramsauer, my buddy Mike. Uh, he's so I. I really want to buy that uh, Reckless eighty because I'm an overpacker and I accept it. I want to buy that Reckless eighty liter from Moscow, but it's a pricey. So I got. Uh, he's got a old set of Tusk Reckless bags that I. I was sure I was not going to fit all my stuff in. Somehow I managed to fit all my stuff in. So maybe I don't don't even need to buy new bags. Uh, anyways, I say all that to say I wanted to go camping Friday. And then I forgot because I was just sort of absentmindedly clicking stuff, trying to figure out how to sign up to teach classes a few weeks ago. I'm teaching a frigging class on Saturday. And that wrecks the whole weekend for camping because it's 
10 hours. So I'm real bummed that I don't get to go camping this weekend. I'm actually, I might take off. I need to check the weather and see what it's looking like. I might take off Monday and just go camping Saturday night or Sunday night. Because I really want to go camping off the 501, like real bad. What bag do you have? I'm just curious because I just got uh, the luggage wise. No, like it's... like your sleeping bag because we're oh, tall guys. Uh, the what? Lost Ranger, Lost Ranger, 15 degree, three in one. Okay. From Big Agnes, I love it. I'm like a hardcore side sleeper, and it's got so it's uh hold on, let me bring hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's easier to show you. Uh, so I don't. Shoot. Is he what was still? It? Is he still on here? Is Motocamp? Is Probably. Ben still on here? I'm trying to remember so. which one I just got because he Cause just I had got a, him. He just had a huge sale, so I went nuts. There it is. Stuff. What the fuck? It's only four hundred dollars now. God damn it, dude! He's got a big sale going on, or he did. Well, whatever. I well, I didn't. Never mind. What did if I you're get? a vet, never mind. Oh no, I got the diamond from, Park not, fifteen. It's close 30 to that. Degree. Thirty. So degree. the inner bag is a mummy style, but it's built for side sleepers, so it's like extra spacious. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the outer layer, which is really good for like prime summer camping, you can just skip packing the so the mummy can... bag, and it packs down to friggin' nothing. But so the, it's a mummy bag and a quilt. And the quilt. And then the quilt has, if you look oh, right there on the outsides, it wraps around the uh the there sleeping goes around pad. the sleeping pad. Oh here. Bam. So it's got the little strings and stuff so that it's not sliding around, you don't get loose. And then I'd like to throw the air pad onto a cot, Marchway Cots on Amazon. Uh dude, I'm telling you, if you're not on the cot life. I'm gonna change your life. Wait, hold on, hold on. What, how do you pack a cot on a bike? I'm, I'm serious. It's it, the Marchway cot's not that big. It packs down pretty damn small. It goes so in my so I've got. I forget how I'm, big that tusk thing is. All I'm more so. visual. Can you can you picture? Okay, I got you. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, Amazon.com. Marchway. Cot. Chapow, chapow, pow, pow. Bam. Overall pick. But we're not gonna look at the black one because I just don't like the black aesthetic as much. The blue just is such a cute looking cot. That's it. That's the cot. So what it Ooh, packs cool. down to, can you see my little you can't see the, the cursor. I don't know if that would work for me because I hurdle when I sleep. Her, what the hell does hurdle mean? Like, you, if you, you were jump to jump things it, when you sleep, basically, I I go like this, <laughs> and then and then I'm like this. I mean, this is very you know dramatized, dramatized. But yeah, I I literally like sprawl out. So when I was trying to find a bag, I had to really help have Ben you know dig deep and find me a good a good bag. So I don't think I could do a cot because I'd just fall off the side. Fix yourself. But it's comfy. Dude, I man, listen. You know who and I wanna say, if I'm not wrong, did I pitch the cot to you and then you bought it? Or did you just buy it? No, I feel I like I pitched remember. it to you. I feel like I pitched you the idea and I was like, I'm I I'm thinking I think so. You, you pulled it out and was like, oh, you mean this one? You I was like, this son one? of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. So technically, he bought it first, but it was my idea. Uh, do, it's, oh, my God. It's okay, such a cop. good night of sleep. That, so and then I throw an air mattress on top of that. What's the advantage? It's just comfortable. It's like, okay. it is as comfortable as sleeping in my own bed. 100%. So how small does it pack down? Um, okay, Mike says cot life. This big. Ladle Sport ADV says cot. Right about this like, big. Like, that's literally it. That's it, yeah. So the whole thing, so uh, bring it it's back up. It's smaller than my so, camping chair. What the hell? So all of the legs come apart. They separate here. So all of the plastic pieces separate. Well, no, that's not true. This part separates. 
Oh shit! You guys can't see. <laughs> uh, I can see it. No, I was. But we can't I was see using my, I was using my arrow. My mouse. Ah. Uh, the center section of the just leg. Point at the screen with your finger. Hold on. Hold. Hold on. Entertain. Hold on. Let me get rid of. Let me get rid of this. And then <laughs> there. Just hold on. Can you put the goose mucus music on? This is stupid. It's <laughs> It's like probably two water bottles. It's that small. That's, it's, okay. I might have to look into get, getting one of those then. Yeah, it's not very big. How wide of a sleeping pad do you have? My pad, I think, is a 26 wide, and I think that cot's probably a 30 wide. So old. Okay, so that'd probably work with mine. I think mine's a 30 wide. Oh, that's it? This is it. So... Oh no! Oh yes! Uh, fuck it. So the cot's twenty. The cot's twenty-eight wide. It's the joy of now being single. Is I don't have to worry about cleaning that up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your individual. You guys hear me? Yes, sir. Your individual uh, braces. Yeah. Right. So it splits in the middle. Uh-huh. And then the these pieces here split off, so it packs down. Okay, it's like my camping chair. Yeah, kind of, just a little bit bigger. Well, I honestly think that might camp pack down smaller than my camping chair. Care. You need a better camping chair because oh, uh, I have a I have a Helinox. Oh, it's uh, yes, it's about the same size. It's the same size as the chair. Okay, it's about it's a little bit a little bit shorter and a little bit thicker. exact dimensions because i've seen that uh camp chair but it's not bad at all so i've got a big dry bag that'll go on the back rack and in that has my two-man tent because i like to have space for my equipment all my sh stuff um tent sleeping pad cot chair air pad i'll go in the dry bag and then everything else uh everything else that i pack i'm not going to try and list all of the things that i have because my adhd brain's just going to fry up go into that rackless system but it's not it's not bad does your adhd brain make you wait until the last second to do anything like pack yeah everything yeah well <laughs> yeah. no uh well no that's not I go the other direction with it. So, like, I was planning on uh, camping this Friday. Uh -huh. Because I got new luggage, last Saturday, I sat down and plowed through trying to figure out how I was going to make sure everything fit. Because I wanted to make sure it was done. Okay. But that's, that's because I knew during the work week I wasn't going to really have time. Well, sure, but that's that's different. Like... I'm taking a half day tomorrow to go up to the cabin to do like a dual sport weekend with the boys. And I haven't packed yet. The boys. Yeah, but you've packed. As I would assume you have packed enough times to know that when you do it, you know exactly how everything's going to fit in. Right. Uh, okay. Well then. Yeah. Oh, well going up there. I'm just, I'm throwing my bike on the hitch hauler. Oh, that's what, what the hell is packing then? You just throw everything in a suitcase. I pack all my stuff. Suitcase. I just yeah. call it a bag. Well, yeah, it's whatever. Weird. Yeah. No, I do the exact I do the exact same thing when it comes to that. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Week, two week trip. If I'm in the car, I'm just throwing shit in a bag and hoping I don't forget anything. <laughs> pair of undies, pair of socks. Good to go. I'll throw I always I always carry two pairs of socks because I have this weird worry that somehow one pair is going to get wet and I just want to have a dry pair of socks. But yeah, otherwise, if I had a pair of darn tough socks, I wouldn't have to worry about packing multiples. I still would pack two because what if one gets wet? But go to Moto Camp Nerd, guys. Buy, uh, buy a pair. I'm telling you, guys, these friggin' socks are incredible. I wonder if they make these in my size. I'd probably be... What size foot do you have? It varies They're on very what very specific. Wearing. Because if I'm wearing like like an athletic sneaker or like a skate shoe, I'll wear them really tight 
all the way down to like a 10 and a half or an 11, but like my work boots are 13s. They're very specific in the sizing. It is just about as specific I... in the sizing as it is like an actual shoe and they're built for the foot. Well, it's a I shoe would go size. like a 12. Yeah. So I would want to get a large cause that's size 10 to 12. Oh yeah. So I have extra large. So if anyone wants to buy me socks for my birthday, I'm a size large. Clever plug. Well played. Guys, guess what? In darn tough. It's P break number two. Eric Sweet says he's six foot four, size 12, darn tough, thick, great. Yeah, they have an extra large size that's like 12 and a half to 14 and a half. Yeah, but I don't I don't like my feet to swim around. And if the intent is to fit tight, then I think I want them to fit tight. Yeah, so then you'd just be in a large then. I think that was a ten to a size ten to twelve for the large. ADHD life. I'm so glad. ADHD makes me over plan and underpack. Wow. There's I can relate <laughs> to so many people in here. <laughs> right. Did Soils Man set out to become an engineer in life and he settled to be I don't want to say settled. Your brain didn't let you do math, so you're a mechanic also. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. But yeah, let's see. Tall man moto except for meat and beans. <laughs> meat oh, my and beans. Bring my beers meat and beans. Oh, the other thing about that cot is that you've got that four to six inches under the cot. You can store stuff in the tent too. Oh yeah, that too. Also, uh they make two different so our um our stockier friends. They make a big guy cot. So like the, the weight limit's a little bit higher. Which is exciting because everybody it should sleep in a goddamn good. cot. And I don't think it's even that much bigger as far as storage space goes. Marchway ultralight folding. That's it. Cot. Yes. For sixty nine dollars. How, how are the sixty nine ninety nine? Well, yeah. Because the other ones are like few hundred and yeah dude i've had mine for how long have we had these like two years now right two years over two years yeah so this thing's 74 inches long i don't Do ever sleep over i don't ever sleep like straight i guess what did what the hell did you call it uh i hurdle hurdle oh, hurdle so i i bring i typically Not bring hurdle. my knees up a little bit i'm never sleeping like oh you're in the fetal position out. yeah kind of yeah, that's it. Fetal. Okay. The fetal position. Yeah, I've got a lot of childhood trauma, so... He's the, he's the big spoon. <laughs> I like how he dipped out on that one. Nobody else in, in this live stream is surprised, except for you with that statement. I just, uh, I don't know you guys enough. Well, come on in. <laughs> you know, I could have, but I didn't. I didn't. Always do. I'm getting All low right. on water. Um, guys, throw us throw us some sweet questions. Yeah, give me questions. Give Matt Roden all the questions. I'll try to explain it now that I'm less uh, anxious. What's in the um? What's in the Instagram mug? Water. Cause oh, is that, my oh. beverage of choice? Yeah, I'm not a big, not a big. You said drinker. less anxious. I thought maybe. Oh no, it was, no. It was it's it's a it's a You're it's just a more time thing. Yeah, it's the ADHD uh -huh. anxiety. Okay. He's comfortable now. Invite him in trio. <laughs> Three men, one tent. Hold on, is Mike still watching? Shit, sorry, sorry, Mike. Mike, you you can get in there too. I think now's the time to advertise Tall Man's camp out. You're having a camp out? No, that was a funny joke about a bunch of men spooning together. Oh, I'd Keep go to up. I'd go for your camp out. I don't know if I'd. Um... I found we found a, a big dispersed camping area that fits the idea of doing a group group camp really well, and so I kind of want to plan one this summer. Just throw out the GPS coordinates. Be like, if you show up, you show up. If you don't, that's cool. But oh. What are some of your favorite braps or trips in recent memory? I don't know, Blackhawk. 
can tell you that uh, playoffs are Monday and Friday against Portland, and I'm going to be at one of them. So, probably. The answer is probably Blackhawk. Favorite braps or trips in recent memory? Go. Mm. Ready, go. Ready. Oh, uh, I mean, I already talked first about thing that. thing that comes to mind. The rally that was down in Ohio. I mean, granted, that was my first rally I went to. But, um, no, that was, that was a lot of fun. We ended up trailering, trailering our bikes down because we just, we were both on brand new tires and we didn't want to tear up tires for, you know, 800 miles of pavement. Oh yeah. But it was, it was four days kind of down in that Southwestern portion of Appalachia. Um, what, what were we close to? I think Virginia. So it was really hilly, um, terrain wise. It's like in Ohio. Yeah, it's southeastern Ohio. It's in it's in the Wayne National Forest. Beautiful country. Um, you end up staying at it was at like a college. And anyone that's within the area of Whale and Wayne, I would a hundred percent recommend. And I'd be going this year if it wasn't for the wedding, because I know for a fact that if I go there, I will. Oh, okay. I'll hurt myself and I'll be in a sling and um, my lady would kill me if I did that. And I'd, I'd be upset with myself too. Um, but no, like terrain rot terrain. Wa- oh my God. I need to take this out. I can't talk terrain wise. It. it was. <clears throat> okay. Well, you're dying real quick. Just lane ADV asks, do you put your sleeping bag on the cot sleeping pad on the cot? Just lane. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sleeping pad on the cot. Most comfortable night of sleep camping you'll ever have. Also, Frank says, uh, I moved to VA last summer and have yet to get out to a rally out here. I think, I don't know where Tour Tech does it, but they do an East Coast rally out there. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Ooh. Are you done? Are you done dying? Yeah. <clears throat> and go. No, but like terrain wise, the trails, it was quad trails, but it's a lot of hills, a lot of switchbacks. And it was like gravel, gravelly clay. So it was super tacky. So no, 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 no. It almost felt like you were riding on concrete as far as a level of grip. Like you could ride. Stick into your bike real bad? No, 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 no. Oh, no. I mean, it was, it was, it was dusty, but. Some of these trails we were riding, you could go like 50, 60, just flying through the woods on a big bike. And it was, it was a ton, ton of fun. Um, if you, I'm going to shamelessly plug myself. If you go to my channel and you look up like, and no shameless plugs here. Sorry. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I told you to do it a number of times and you denied it. I know, but now that you you were all as you were, um, as you were, no, I've got a video on it. Or well, I split it into three because it so was like half an hour. Gravel. What the hell does that mean? I shouldn't say tacky gravel. So like, imagine clay with like, like stones s- embedded in gravel? it. Gravel? No, no. Like clay with stones embedded. I don't know how else to describe it because I'm just clay so used stones. to. Huh. Like super hard pack, but really okay. like a ton. Oh, okay, of tra- okay, 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 okay. A ton of traction. Like if you spun the rear tire, you'd probably see smoke coming up. Really? Does that make sense? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, like if you just twisted the throttle in some spots, you'd leave rubber on the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. Garrick, where are you? Just out of curiosity. So uh, Garrick says, if you guys are uh, unable to read, I got you. Uh, Cots are super comfy, but the lack of insulation limits their use for me. Which you're not wrong. One of the things, so I think that's one of the reasons why I like to throw a um, an air pad under uh, between me and the. I need to get. I used to have a. What the hell was it? The Sea to Summit Extreme. It's like a six point six insulation rating. R value. Ooh, but, I kind of want to. Oh, you're still talking. So oh, I, I, I was going to say I, I returned that because it was two hundred and fifty dollars. And that paid for half of my uh, sleeping bag setup. But I really want to get another one because they're perfect for all weather. As you were, sir. Who, me? 
Yeah. Favorite motorcycle movie. Favorite motorcycle movie? What? Mine's not even a movie. It's a series of videos. Oh. It's like, what it's... the hell are you talking about? <laughs> no, it, it was a it was a question that yeah, yeah. someone yeah, had yeah, asked. I, I, What's your favorite motorcycle movie? No, it was a series that, okay, I don't want to say I'm a Sterling Noreen fanboy because he's from the area I grew up and live in. But um, the, the riding solo series he did during COVID is what literally pushed me oh, to yes. get my GS. I was like, I have to because this is exactly what I want to do. And then it's just festered from there. Um, I, and the way he f- shot that entire series is amazing. He, dude, he's nuts. Like, he's a menace with a camera. It's ridiculous. I will say, like, he's he's also. Okay, let me be general because I don't want to like give away stuff that might ruin things for people. Mm-hmm. But as like as somebody who has a very reasonable background in video production, it's never been my profession. It's always sort of been like a professional hobby. But right. like I noticed, like he's clever in the way that he edits stuff versus oh, yeah. how he shoots it. So like there's. Oh, yeah. I will say there's stuff he's using that is, and this is not wrong at all. It's actually very, very smart to do. It's chronologically out of order, Mm -hmm. but he knows where to grab like this piece that works, maybe where he's riding on day three and throw it into day two. Yeah. It's just, he's, he is, he is an extremely talented, both video uh, shooter and an editor, like the production overall. He's just, yeah, yeah. I, I mean it all in a very full, positive way. Yeah. Full yeah. picture production He's, is it's he it's creates so easy beautiful to watch. Stuff. It makes there sense was, why he's doing every yeah. BDR. Well, he had a, a f- I think it was from last summer when he was doing what what the Ca- California BDR one where he was up in Vancouver and he was coming back and I remember so vividly. I don't even remember what state he was in. There's a shot of him in like a uh, a grass field or something mm-hmm. and he must have just had his camera on a tripod and he's just kind of looking around and the way he got that shot it was just chef's kiss have you seen the the california bdr video yet the history lesson in zero ad sorry i had to say it is that what it is i haven't seen it yet so i don't know <laughs> I'm just going to wait. I was going to yeah. go do the local one and then it yeah. conflicted with something else in my schedule. So I just, I was like, well, I'll wait. Cause they're putting them all on YouTube now. Yep. I really like going to them for the social aspect, but I was like, this right, one, right. it's not relative to me. I'm never going to go yeah. do it. No, I, I go to them for the social aspect and the, the dealer group that I work for, we have, mm. um, well, I think technically we have three power sports locations now. There's oh, one that I had bought my KTM from, which is up north in Baldwin. Which is not um, as good as a Husky. Keep it to yourself. Sorry, my my cat growled or something. It was weird. Oh, okay. Your cat's name is KTM or something, right? That's why um, I want to kick him all the time. But yeah, we've got a couple different locations. There's one down by us in Grand Rapids. There's one up north in Baldwin, and then we have a Harley store. But um one of the guys I ride with is a yeah. salesman there and he's really involved with the adventure community here. So like the second that <clears throat> showing was available, we had it in February. And then I went to the Beamer dealer down the street oh, from no. it and saw it the same day after because socialize. I just love zero? riding. Zero? They took a zero on the California BDR? Yeah. Uh... Favorite non-moto YouTube channel. Oh, wait, hold on. I pinned this so that I wouldn't forget to answer it. Um, but I, Ooh. I'm actually very curious to hear that answer. Uh, are caught, caught feet hard on the tenth floor? I have not yet, in two years, had an issue with the the feet of the cot wearing anything in my uh, my tent. I think once you're laying on it, it doesn't really move much, right? So. I think it's putting enough pressure on it that it keeps it in place relative to that fabric between the cot and the actual like dirt. So I don't, I don't think so. I have not, I don't, I, I don't have any holes in my tent. Eric Sweet is the answer. Uh, non-moto YouTube channel. That's a great question. 
I want you to go first on this because I'm interested because I love YouTube. Um, I hold on. I have to pull up YouTube because all of the names just went I, out of my brain. I had to do the same thing, but what I have it pulled up. If you want me to... uh, oh, Mark. I like Mark Rober a lot. I like yeah. um, Mark slow mo guys. Mark... I love slow mo guys. And then there's another one. What the hell is it called? It's not the 99 Club. Hold on. I have to go to my subscriptions because I'm pretty sure I'm subscribed to them on everything. Ooh, maybe not. Let me go to my personal one. Hold on. Switch account. Oh, I don't want to add it. That's too much work. Let me just Google 99 Club YouTube. What the hell is it called? There's another one where they like, they're, they're, they're in New Zealand and they drop shit. Typically, they're dropping shit off of. A oh, tower. you know what I'm talking I know about. The guys. Yeah, I can't it's remember like, the name of it. Yeah, I I know who you're talking about. They're always dropping stuff off of like a pool dive and dams. Anvil and... verse. Let's just do anvil verse. That should get us. Anvil verse. I wasn't in YouTube. I was in Google. How ridiculous! Yes. That's yeah. So how ridiculous yes. Mark Rober and what was the other one I said? Uh, uh, slow-mo guys. I love, I've loved sm- slow-mo guys for a long time though. So I think I really put them as like my top that again, that's the video production. And like when you can like right. slow a bullet down and watch it, it just, I think it's so cool. Okay. You go. Me? You can't say any of those three. No. So like car content, I don't want to be a sellout and say amateur enthusiast, but I do enjoy stuff. No car content. There's a guy called Taylor Ray, and that's just the name of his channel that I've watched probably since he started. And it's, I don't know. I can just watch that guy really easily. Um, What else do we have? I've been getting into space race. They do like weekly updates on what's going on with space. Dude, it's, I have never been so invested in something in my life. Is it is the name of the channel Space Race? The, yeah, the name of the channel is literally just Space Race. So like oh, I would talking be super about into that, yeah, yeah. Oh, you you're gonna want to check that one out. Um, real engineering. That's another one that I love because I that just one's love good. to know how I've seen that one. Love to know how things work. And then Wendover Productions. That dude does not miss. He's usually talking about like. I don't want to, not societal issues, but like big events that are going on in the world, whether they're well known or not. Um, and he goes pretty in depth with that. I'm just, I'd consider myself a lifetime student. I love, I love to learn. I don't like to sit idle. Yeah. Same. Practical engineering. That's another good one. And then that there's is a, another good one. A French guy cooking Alex. His account is literally Alex. Oh. And he, dude, that guy has taught me so much about how to make good pasta and good ramen it's not even funny uh another one that i really love that's non-youtube is uh hot ones which i feel like everybody can jump on board easily but i freaking uh, love hot ones. what's her name who's the chick from um the hunger games oh dude hers is uh hers oh, is whole- i'm blanking but that's my hollywood pass in any relationship is yeah. uh yeah i can't think of her name uh lawrence something lawrence jennifer lawrence jennifer lawrence when it starts getting really hot, she's just like, what do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you were talking about space things and then slightly unrelated, but not. Um, hopefully it comes through. I might have to get rid of us. Okay. Let me get rid of let me get rid of us for a second to make this bigger. Okay. So everybody look at this picture for five seconds and then we'll be back. So see all the little lines. So these that's are Starlink. Sh- that's Starlink. So we so this is at Get Lost Find Yourself last year up on North Vancouver Island. We're just sitting there bullshitting around the campfire, and then suddenly this fucking string of lights just starts popping up in the uh, in the sky. It was the most awesome thing I think I've ever seen, like at night in the sky in my life. It was so what there was probably like God, there had to be what, like twenty of them? It's a solid what, like twenty? 
You're hey, pay attention. I'm asking you a question. Twenty, right? <laughs> twenty is a solid number. At like least. twenty, yeah. twenty satellites. Yeah, it was so cool. I yeah. So uh, anyway, it was amazing. Um, unrelated to YouTube, uh, but not because you know we were all doing YouTube, but it was pretty neat. <sighs> I'm so excited for freaking get lost this year. I'm gonna do all of the things. Uh, is uh. Yes, Northern Is Carl Lights. still Carl still around? Carl, are you still in here? I haven't seen him comment in a while. He probably dipped out, which makes sense. So, uh, do you I do you follow you close follower of Critter? Me? Yeah, I've been getting I've been getting into the Critter. Okay, so he's got a friend whose name is Carl. Oh, there he is. He's right here. Oh no, wait, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Carl, uh, they have a, a riding scale and it's how many times you say Jesus, Carl on a ride. So there's, I think, a, I think it's a one to five scale, but my final d decision, determination, mistake has been, I'm not asking for a specific JC scale, the Jesus Carl scale. But I want Carl to take me out on the 501 on something I won't forget. And that's like, that's one of my days that I have planned for Get Lost this year. Because now I've got this 501 and I want to push myself. I want to struggle a little bit and I want to end up somewhere super dope. So I'm, I'm super excited to follow Carl. He is, he is an insanely capable rider. I don't think Carl's the one that does it two up, right? I, I believe so. And I don't think he's taking anybody above a JC three. I'll do a JC three with him. I I'm going to struggle. I'm like, I, I'm not confidently like I could follow Carl. Cause I have, I know it's going to be terrible, but I want to do it because I can now, like, I'm so excited about it. My toxic trait is now thinking that I could follow Carl. <laughs> this dude is insane. Like he's so good. Yeah. What's he's like, what incredible is incredible writer? Can you give me like a breakdown of the scale? Cause I'm trying I, to just like, okay, hold on. Uh, I'm going to do a thing. We're going to wait a couple of minutes. Let me get to Facebook. Critter yeah, okay. I'm coming for you. I'm sending you a link. Cause Oh no. Oh, he, Oh, that's little fella. That's fine. Small man. Moto just dipped out of his uh, video. Um, where are you? There you are. And paste, send. Hopefully, Critter's able to hop on here for a quick second because he can give you a solid. Oh, he's trying to do it in the comments. Uh, Critter, I just sent you. Hey. I just sent you a link so you can hop on and explain to us the JC scale because he knows the JC scale. Okay. There's, there's no way. Two is a BDR. <laughs> okay like a jc3 that's a big jump <laughs> yeah what does that even we mean went, we went from typical bdr to <laughs> what does fuck that mean? What does so that what mean? does five look like <laughs> four is the second coming of hell and we're all waiting with bated breath what's a five jc look like is a 5JC just you and your bike wadded up into a tree? <laughs> like, what's a 5? My motorcycle adventure says death. Yeah, what's a 5JC then? I okay, really thought, so, like, 4JC would be FML. Okay, 5JC is wish you stayed wish in the stay womb. <laughs> but, like, what? Why do I? Why did I wish I stayed yeah, in the we womb? Need, we need I need to know why. Yeah, I need. Do something. I have? I think I have. Hold on, let me see. I think I have Carl on the Facebook. I do have Carl on the Facebook. Well, I guess your guys like Carl. JT I'm sending scale. you the link too. If you want to hop on and explain your scale, you now hey. have the link on Facebook. Your guys scale is way Five different. Five JC, you actually meet Jesus. I don't know, man. We talked enough last year about the 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 JC scale that. I don't think because well, you guys will be riding down stuff that's like literally a, a billy goat wouldn't even want to go down because it's so yeah, steep because and it's narrow. The Pacific Northwest and yeah. 
Oh, he has no webcam. Oh, sorry. Can't bring Carl on. All right, it's all up to uh, Critter Mono. He has to hop on and explain the JC scale, regardless of what he's doing. The internet needs it. Peer yeah, pressure. I think, like, Just kidding, buddy. If you can't make it, no big deal. A JC that is scale a huge. Of... That's a huge jump from typical PR yeah, to fucking like, life, though. <laughs> well, what's a second coming of hell? Is it like 10 miles of whoops straight and all you can do is pin it? No, I feel like at that okay. point, you're talking okay. about like big rocks and okay. stuff. Yes, 5JC is actual goat trails. Okay. From the man himself. <laughs> so give give Matt a two-stroke and put him on a JC5 and report back. No, thank you. I know my limits. No, I think you on like a 300, nice torquey bike that doesn't stall, you'd do fine. Um, excuse me. The FE501S is perfect for every situation that exists in the world. Trials well, riding type trail. Dude, I got to ride with you guys. This stuff sounds fun. Oh, dude, yeah, that's that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not there. Not there. Hold on. Carl has a YouTube channel, doesn't he? I got to look him up now. I think so. Where'd he go? Oh, he just he's just gone. Small Man Moto has just disappeared. I think Carl and I could have a lot of fun. Probably. Um... No, thank you. Solisman says, how about a thousand feet of exposure with a six inch wide track? No, thank you. See, um, around Carl here, says we, nothing special on my YouTube. Sorry. We go by pucker factor. Nope. Not this guy. Well, I don't know. You got, just kind of get give outside like, of your comfort zone. I was just going to say, give it like a year year and a half of really like learning the bike and getting comfortable and then a thousand foot of exposure with a six inch wide track like i would probably do it i'm pretty i don't know i i have a weird irrational fear of heights like if there's something in the way that says you can't fall it's fine the deception pass bridge because it's below my center of gravity i panic <laughs> i'm sorry but I just pulled up Carl's channel and it starts auto playing and it's just a video titled advice. And it goes, it's, I'm assuming it's Carl and it's just, do not follow Carl. He'll take you somewhere <laughs> stupid. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds, yeah. That sounds like somebody hacked Carl's channel and was like, FYI, don't follow this guy. Ooh, he, dude, this guy's oh, yeah. a maniac. Hold on. What is he, what is he riding? Can you share screen? You can share screen. Guests can share screen. Bring us into what you're looking at. Carl, Focus. are you okay? Focus. Matt Roden, come back to us. ADHD. Nope, he's yeah. gone. He's really, you you he's want really me, wrapped up. Do you want me to share? Yeah, share screen. Also, it's P number three, so entertain the people. Multitask. Multitask, Roden. Okay. I'll try. Oh, I can't. Sorry, guys, I can't. I would have to quit Chrome and reopen. Carl, what? You're on a 300 rally. Because, like, there's a video of you just riding. Are you on, like, a snowmobile trail? You are. You're literally on a snowmobile trail. What? You're riding down, like, a, a river Carl, I got to get out to where you are because this looks like a no, lot of fun. I figured it out yet. No, if I do, I have to restart Chrome. That's too <clears> much <throat> work. Don't do any of that. Well, yeah, because then I'd go bye bye and you know. Okay, hold on. Let me go find him. Let me happy. see. Let me see what you're looking at, dude. He's Carl literally Jones. riding down a snowmobile trail. That doesn't look right. None of this looks right. I had to search him by the channel. What's the channel name? Carl Jenkins. All one word? No. Yeah, I did that, and it did not come up. Carl Rich. underscore Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins. Underscore. 
Uh, short video filters. Oh, uh, soils, man. I'm going to stop you right there. We what have real, he said, we have real trails. Every trail is a real trail. Now, that sounds like somebody who hasn't ridden the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Gosh, you people out west, that's not real snowmobiling. You don't have mountains. There are no snow. We have real. Yeah, you see, that sounds like you know what you know what you know what that sounds like, dude. Come out, come out and ride. Do you remember that video I showed you, the one I sent you of me riding my bike on the single track, where I said it doesn't oh, yeah, matter yeah, yeah. how you do it; it's just as long as you do it. Oh, okay, all right. That's all well and fine, but then you ride in the Pacific Northwest, and you're like, damn, it's great out here. I, there's so many Carl Jenkins, I'm never going to find him. I don't know how well, you found him dude, so quick. I found him in like two seconds. I literally went to Carl Jenkins. I went to YouTube. I typed in Carl Jenkins. I searched by... Are you spelling it wrong? Jenkins? No, that's all right. J-E-N-K-I-N-S. I literally... I, I clicked on it. I went to the filter. Mm -hmm. I videoed by channel. And then I scrolled down and I found the one of the guy on the motorcycle. And his tagline is literally, don't that's follow so Carl. He'll take you somewhere stupid. Yeah, I don't see any, which you would think they would like cue into the fact that, oh, there he is. I found him. Yes. I, there's a lot of scrolling involved in that. Oh, look, he sent me. Yes. Oh. <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh, shit. That's so great. Hold on. Stop screen. Present. The very first thing you see when you get to his channel that, yes, auto plays. Do not follow Kara. He'll take you somewhere stupid. Just eight this seconds of awesome. somebody being so upset. Dude, oh, screw shit, me. Great. I have Carl on. Carl doesn't have a like, webcam, like, we learned. Shaw Ridge in the snow. He's just riding in the snow. I said snowmobile trail because that looks Probably. like a snowmobile trail. Yep, there he is, just in the snow. This is Carl. Carl, are you two up in this situation? He asked, waiting for the YouTube comment. That's nuts. I oh 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 wow. that. Yeah, Carl's nuts. Oh, he was out solo this time. A, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I I, was, I figured as soon as the first time those bars went a little squirrely. My guess was okay. He must not have the extra weight of a second person on there because I have a feeling Carl has scarier. no sense of fear. No, I think that part of him just not there. Do you follow me on YouTube? No, you? you? No, because you yeah. said you don't have anything exciting, so I didn't go find you. You can go look at it. Have nah. fun. Nah. No, it's a lot of GoPro because I you just have to sell I yourself. Like schlepping a camera around no if people want to they can <sighs> a good i don't even know how to share it i don't i don't know how do i do that um is it it's underscore roden right i don't know oh matt roden skincare is that you uh you weren't supposed to find that one nothing more than a tall guy with long hair that likes to ride his motorcycle and feel himself doing so matt dash roden all one word go find him oh yeah that's you yeah i didn't even look at the profile picture that's you matt dash roden at matt dash roden on Here. the youtubes go find him uh, i'm gonna plug myself there yeah, i told you to there it is i haven't made a video in a long time it's, you have to copy and winter. paste though i did is this is it clicky no i meant for the people they have to copy and paste how do i click the link how do I make it clicky? You can't. Oh. It's a whole YouTube thing. You have to be a oh. moderator. It's so that people no. can't share their OnlyFans. Oh. In the oh. comments. 
Look, the video you sent uh, me, I don't even see. Oh, here it is. Is this it? Which one is it? The one, uh, the single Oh, track. Is yeah. Is that even that's, on here? That's the legs are on fire. Legs are on fire? Yeah, that was, that's like 21 minutes. Legs are on go, fire. Bro. Nine. I don't see it. 21 minutes. Here it is. I found it. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. You're talking. No one cares. Talking, 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 Most talking. Of my videos. Here we go. See, okay. I have to do the talking for my mom. Share screen. The legs are on fire. Yeah, this guy on. Huh. Oh, turns out Let the bike cool down a little bit. Here we go. Now he's know. he's on a BMW R1200 GS. This is not as fast as the thing. Oh. Oh. No. Oh, here was, we go. Uh... Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the sound down though because it's all music. Oh, turn that way down. Just ripping on single track. For a bike that size. Eh, I don't know about Dude, well, I, okay, I was going to say okay, it for that well, size. Listen, for me, <laughs> I'd be like, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do. Like, that's probably me on on that 501 here in a couple of months. I'm going to start going out to Walker. No, there's like, there's like a very, it's that spot where I have like the really dramatic orchestral music playing and. I start talking about how it doesn't matter what kind of bike you're on. As long as you get out there, we're working with what we got, which maybe someday mm -hmm. I'll make a film oh, based right, on yeah. Michigan motorcycling. I really want to, um, if I can, but have you ever had like just flow state? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, is that a drug? No. So flow state is like, you'll hear it talked amongst from like, action sports athletes and it's where you're literally just like time feels like it kind of slows and you're not even trying to do what you're doing your body's just oh yeah doing it that's basically what just happened that entire ride of i didn't i wasn't really aware what i was doing the whole time i was just going it was Wait, a lot of on. fun uh i just want to jump on a chance to uh bash on bc fairies yeah they're the worst Cole Jenkins says, uh, held prisoner by BC Ferries, and they're out of hand fees. It's... <sighs> I hate BC what? What, hate. If we, what if we... What if we... You and me had a crossover? That would require you to come out here and ride the good but, trails. No. What if we go somewhere further north? Like... Alaska. That's really far to do a crossover. I really want to ride the Dalton, though. Well, yes. 100% also. I was going to... I told myself I was going to do it this year for my 30th birthday, oh, and that's not happening. I was going to say definitely not this year. Saskatchewan <laughs> makes sense as a middle ground if we're going to go to Canada. Or you could come to Michigan. That's no, so far don't away. Do that. No, no. That, it could be worth it. I was, you get no, the, it's not. The northern, I, listen, the northern lower peninsula in the There UK. is a reason that so many people in the Navy are from Michigan. It's because it's the only way out of Michigan. You, you take that back. I won't. I stand behind it based on my experience of all the people that I've known. Also, you know what I just learned just now? No. Hold on. I have to do a... I have to do a quick science thing. Oh my god. I sometimes use pub my beer GPS. Pub cans are not pub beer cans are not um uniform in how they are printed with their labels. Holy shit, wildly different. Remember earlier when I was like, oh, before we started, I made a statement. I was like, oh, pub beers, uh, they create their cans conducive to live streams. Not true. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hold the mouth to you guys for both of them. Completely different printing. Isn't that like every beverage, though? 
if it is, I have literally never noticed it before. And as like somebody who has a marketing background, it would make sense to me that you would print things very exact. Yeah, but you know how, how people hold them. How hard that is, like not hard. Not how much how many a degree? Yeah, but Which how many extra steps of manufacturing yeah. that is? I shouldn't That's say extra steps. That's a lot of work. Mm. I mean, clearly it is because it's ten. Well, it's ten barrel. They should have their shit together. That's a lot of work f- f- versus one guy on the internet complaining about it. <laughs> Saskatchewan leave. Does Saskatchewan suck? I don't know anything about Saskatchewan, so I'm gonna guess it probably does. Isn't Saskatchewan basically like the Great Plains in the U.S.? Like it's just flat and boring. It's all farmland and. I mean, that tracks with the rest of America relative to the position, so I'm going to go with yes. Moose capital of the world. You have not been to Isle Royale. Moose. Who said moose capital of the world? Soilsman. Oh, I wouldn't argue with him. (laughs) Nothing sucks, just flat. Yeah, so kind of like, oh my gosh. Where are you guys going in Michigan? Like Detroit? Is there a good part of Michigan? Like, am I missing something here? Yes. Dude, like half of our state is national forest. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, but not like, ha! <laughs> <clears throat> We're at 21. I trust all 21 of you. There's a Gaylord in Michigan? Yeah, Gaylord. Ah. It's right about... <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's actually some good skiing. Nineties there. child me really likes that. Uh, we also have what else do we have? Hell. I think we have just straight gay Michigan Did you say too. Hell, hell, yeah, hell, hell. H e l l. Yeah, hell, hell Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. So just Michigan. Yeah. Uh, I'm funny. You prissy northwestern people with your craft beers in our mountains. Those aren't mountains. Wait, volcanoes. I do like Oregon. What is this? Even though weird, you're Washington. What's this weird sliver thing up above? It's like Wisconsin, but you guys that's like Isle, it. That's Isle Royale. Where are you? I'm down here. Isle Royale's like up here. None of that is helpful. None of this looks like a hand. What are you? Oh, what? I see. If you look at just real Michigan and not Isle Royale, it looks like a mitten. Okay, I see what you're talking about. Wait, hold on. Are you talking about the Upper Peninsula? Oh, my God. Or are you hold talking on. about the little strip that has all the wolves and the moose on it? You're welcome, everybody who's watching and good at geography. Because I'm sure this is entertaining for you. Where the hell are you? Grand Rapids. Oh, you're in Grand Rapids? Yes, it was beer capital USA forever. Mm. Okay, so if you zoom in to Washington, caught on. I'm just saying. Shh. Oh no, we're not going to try to find my house, creep. You said zoom in. Go go north. <laughs> uh huh. Find Baldwin. 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 Oh no. You just zoom in. See the this see the you. I'm not... pointing at my screen like you can see. See Reed City. Reed. Okay. Go left. Zoom. Left. Baldwin. Ah, Baldwin. ah, great riding. That's where I'll be this weekend. My uh, my family has a cabin up there. Out here. Yep. I'm guessing. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, That's okay, all. Hold on. Let's switch to. There we go. Oh yeah. yeah. So okay. if you there's lots of trees out there. Are you on? Um, What's the uh, what's the old uh, Gaia? Does does Gaia show like ORV trails and stuff? Yes. This is Google. So Maps, you would just, yeah. I was gonna say if you were on Gaia or something that shows DNR and Forest Service trails, then you would just see the area completely. Yeah, like little O trailhead. Oh, okay, yeah. So somewhere down in there, just south, is where I did my whole spiel of like, oh, it doesn't matter what kind of bike you're on, blah blah blah. It was somewhere. It was probably where your mouse is. It was somewhere in there. Interesting. Yeah. Lots yep. of trees. Look at that tree. That's a nice Lots tree. Lots of trees. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Vertical log tree. 
Uh, highest point on Van Isle is 72. Wait, he says, I'm guessing he means feet. Vancouver Island? Yeah, uh, it's it's referred to as Van Isle because Vancouver Island is ah, okay. Van Isle, uh, okay. seventy two hundred feet. That's friggin' tall. I, think... I did not know. We that. we actually okay, so we actually have mountains in Michigan. You'd have to go to the Upper Peninsula. No, you don't. They're called the Porkies. It's the Porcupine Mountains. The Porkies. Yep. So you're still in the Lower Peninsula. You are oh, failing at geography. Upper peninsula. That's the end of the peninsula. Nope. You can't get any higher than there. What are you talking about? That's the Lower Peninsula. Pen See, we oh, have the Mackinac Bridge. Upper, it's not oh, pronounced the Mackinac. the fake part of the fake part of. Okay, got it. Here? Yeah, so it's, it's over near like, uh, well, that's the place that gets more snow than you guys do. Like Copper Harbor. Oh, there average, it is. It's like 600 feet of snow. Stop feet. Holy crap. 600 inches of snow. There's great riding. Inches? Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. But it's more towards like the northwest of the UP is the Porcupine Mountains. And it's actually really beautiful. Super beautiful. It's like Ottawa National Forest area. You're right here. So my guess is most of the Michigan BDR is going to be northern lower peninsula. And then a large portion of. See, there's the Porcupine. Okay, right here. Yep. Okay. And then I'm trying to remember. Oh, yep. Nice. Lake of the Clouds. So I'm pretty sure the Michigan BDR will probably make a stop um, near Lake of the Clouds. Oh, damn. Yeah. 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 That's Take that. Pretty. Take that. That's ours Michigan. Is, well, uh. Ours is better, but that's fine. Mount Baker. Okay. I haven't so been take, to Mount Baker. Take, take this. You see this view? Now put yeah, some yeah, real mountains in there. And that's what it looks I like in know. Washington. I know. I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> oh, man. I love Colorado. I love Summit County. Ugh, I love Colorado, all of it. But at the, Colorado's the great. end of the day, hold on. Think Let me do my spiel. There is really nothing in Michigan that can kill you. Like, yeah, we might have a tornado, but a black bear is not going to get you. We don't have rattlesnakes. First of all, black bears, black bears are never going to get you. If you get eaten by a black bear, you deserve to die. You're not going to get the only thing you have to worry about is a cougar. And usually well, they'll just ask if you'll oh, come you mean, inside. Oh, you mean, in, you mean in Michigan? Yeah. 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 I was going to say, no, brown, brown bears will definitely kill you in Washington. <laughs> uh, are there moose out there? Yes. That would be on Isle Royale. And there's some in the northern, northern lower think... peninsula and the upper peninsula. Moose aren't going to kill you, though. Dude, have you ever seen a bull moose gets angry? I don't think I have. Maybe moose. Those will things will you. take you out. Oh, moist. <laughs> I don't even want to say the rest of it. I just want to say moist. Uh, yeah. What? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Never mind. All right, just kidding. Washingtons, get out of here. Get out of here, moist. Sh is that why you out. and is that why you and Dork are at such odds with each other? I hate Dork in the road. First of all, okay. he is the worst. That guy's a dick. Does he have like a burner account that he comes in here and pesters you with? <laughs> He's got a throwaway account. I really wish he did, honestly. I wish he was as smart as uh, Small Man Moto, who just decided to dip out and not come back to the live stream. But Okay, so Critter no, is on... Freaking Critter's on... Ben. He's on Vancouver Island, correct? Yes. Uh, he is in Nanaimo. And he does Get Lost, Find Yourself there. He's the founder for Get Lost, Find Yourself. But Get Lost, Find Yourself. Okay, so since we're talking about things that are uh, geographical. So let me show you. Okay. 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 Hold on, guys. Okay. Hold on, guys. Eric, sweet. Okay, so what knowledge? Van Vancouver Island, right? Uh, get out of here, Lake of the Clouds. No one cares about you anymore. Take okay, that back. so this is for frick's sake. Where's the? Okay, so it, it says it right there, Nanaimo. Down at the yeah, I was gonna say down at the bottom. So this is a twenty mile reference, right? So this is all of okay. Vancouver Island. So right. without moving. 
try and reference the fact that let's do here let's do this so oh, diagonally that's the whole island more or yep. less so we are looking at about all of the state of Washington into nearly Idaho comparably right in that length uh -huh. so coming into Nanaimo which is where more or less there's there's a few different options but unless you're coming off of the Olympic Peninsula in Washington doing the black ball which only makes it worse because now you're down all the way in Victoria which is down here in the corner up if I'm not wrong we're looking at right about based on this we're looking at right about port mcneil so you're taking almost the entirety of the island now you can't see it but i'm using my finger that you've got a, this is like a four and a half hour ride four and a half five hour ride to get from nanaimo really versus victoria which is an extra hour and a half um it's a long ass haul to get to get lost find yourself isn't but this if you do so there's 19 you guys can see my yeah so there's 19 and if you go in just a little bit there's 19 alternate it's really not that much time difference and if you do the alternate you get to do the friggin' coast on the the inside here all the way up, and it's beautiful oh yeah dude i would but it is I, a haul yeah, I'm not trying to do my Sterling Noreen fanboy thing again, but like he did a series up there and I was, I fell in love. No, I fell in love with, I want to go up there. If it's I can ever make it out dude. there, I really want to go out there. It's, it is, it's incredible. And I had never been so long story short, I was in a relationship with somebody for a while who's from outside of Victoria. I got to know the South End of Vancouver Island really well. Um, and so I, I absolutely love it up there. Uh, but the get lost, find yourself last year was the first time I'd ever done the North end of the Island. And it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. And there is no, is there like a uh... better way to describe the views of the North end of the Island? Beautiful. Is there like a, a well-known restaurant or pub or bar or something on like the north end? Ooh, uh, is Critter still in here? He would know the answer to that. I want to say yes, but I don't remember the name of it. Like it's kind of the only thing out there or something. I, I want to say it's somewhere around Port McNeil, but I don't know that area well enough. So I, I can't have expert opinions. Nimkish. Nimkish is, oh, I stopped. Scarlet Abyss. Nimkish is just okay, about yep, where yep. we're at. Okay. Did I say, is it Ibis or Abyss? Uh, I'm going to go with Ibis. Scarlet Ibis. Sounds right. That's over. Yeah, no, that, that looks absolutely amazing. I don't know. I want to say it's like over here, over here somewhere. He would be a much better point of reference for all of this. Obviously, you know, because he lives there. But somebody didn't want to hop on the live to talk about the JC scales, so that's fine. <laughs> they did a, a ride out to the Scarlet Ibis pub last year, but I was obsessed with these uh, caves that we went out to. Dude, just all of it. It's all like I was going to run down the rabbit hole of how beautiful it was, but it's all just so amazing oh, i'm so excited to go this year and i'm gonna have a small bike and we can go up and see amazing viewpoints and i can get to places i never would have been before because that's the whole point of having a dual sport and it's gonna be awesome memories memories for years is there like um i'm sure there's like forest service roads out there are there like yeah orv trails and like single track and stuff you could ride probably I don't know. Little Houston, little Houston caves. That's what I did last year. And I ended up going twice because the first time I went on one of my own and then a uh, small man moto who uh, just decided to dip out of my life and tell me to get out of his life. Um, 
showed up late, so I went with him a second day because I was just so overcome. But the yeah, the the little little Houston caves are amazing. I'm uh, but oh, so critter yeah, critter moto says yes. Okay, I was gonna say I'm, I'm assuming, assuming his response to or yeah. be in single track. Well, when you've got yeah, I would have I would imagine when you've got like crazy like actual like mountains and stuff like this has. There's got to be. Well, he had, they had made the stuff. They had made the coat double trail. four service roads, double track, single track, go trails. Oh yeah, because we've got the JC scale, so there have to be go trails out there. I was say he said go <laughs> trails though. I was assuming they were talking about that area. Yeah, dude. Uh, highly, 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 highly recommend Middle North Vancouver Island. Just beautiful, 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 beautiful stuff. Unrelated side <gasps> note that is related because it's remote. Do you have a satellite communicator? Yes. What do you use the uh, Garmin in reach mini two? Okay. Um, oh, so, uh, the thing that popped up in my brain as you suggested that, uh, critter Canada day this year coming back up. If you're free, let's go ride. Let's go ride. Same, same road. You know what I'm talking about? Um, and I want to see it to its end. So tuck that away. If you're not free, let's pick a weekend somewhere around there, but I want to finish that road. He knows, I know, that's all we need to know. Yes, let's do it. Done. Uh, are you, uh, Critter, are you good? Can I put it in my calendar for Canada today? Or should I plan something else? Do you have anything else? Because I know you do uh, camping with the fam, and I don't want to steal time from that. So if Canada today is good for you, I want to plan for that. There... <laughs> There are no JCs on that road. Didn't somebody end up wrecking a 250 just a little bit further down that road, though? Critter, I'm coming up tomorrow. He said, I'm good anytime you come up. I'm not coming up tomorrow. I wish I was. Oh. Eric Sweet says, oh, where'd he go? Uh, Scarlet Ibis has great retro logo. Hope they sell tees. Oh, different road. I thought. Oh, I thought it was that same road that somebody ended up wrecking a two fifty and messing up a set of handlebars as well. Huh. Anyways, we're gonna go. We're gonna go finish that road because I liked it. And now I don't have to care to not like it. So, um, where are we at time wise? Eight o'clock. Matt Roden, how you feeling? Dude, I'm so dumb. I just realized I didn't have to pop out the comments from YouTube. I could just see them in the stream yard. Oh, yeah. Well, if you don't... Yeah, no, you're not dumb. If you don't know the software, then you wouldn't know that. I didn't realize that. <clears throat> I was I relying that. on Small Man to do all that, uh, but he's not here anymore, So, because he just now I hates me. It, it is 810. It's 11, 10, and I'm probably a boy. That is, that is fair. I forgot that you are. Oh, no, I can go my time. Yeah, I'm in boring Michigan. Ooh. So Osma says I'm going to Van Isle in August. So Osman, what about uh, Canada Day? You want to go up with me? Plan a trip. Let's plan a trip right now. I have all these people that I have to subscribe to now. There's a lot of great people in here. So, uh, for your uh, knowledge, entertainment. So, a Valkyrie, who you notice is um, a regular in the chat. We were at Get Lost, Find Yourself last year, so last September, and she was up there as a photographer for the event. Didn't have a motorcycle, anything, had an interest, but just was up there as a contract photographer. We had a female uh, motorcycle instructor who was like, I'll teach you how to ride. Taught her how to ride her over the weekend. She now has an XT250 and is like, 
freaking killing it in the the dual sport world. Wait, does she? Oh no, this is Soilsman. Sorry, I like Soilsman. He's got he a twelve hundred GS. He is uh, looking to sell a twelve hundred GS. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> you want to buy another one? Party. Who me? Mm-hmm. No. Don't you need if, two twelve hundred GSs? No. Um, oh, critters leaving. Whenever, wherever, lots of. Uh... All right, bye, critter. I'll follow up with you, but let's let's maybe plan on uh, Canada Day, and I want to come back up and I want to do that same route. It's gonna be friggin' awesome. Anyways, as you were, sorry. No, I don't. I don't need another you another twelve hundred. You need you need two of them. We have a lot of bikes in our garage right now. We have a six hundred and fifty GS that my lady's mom got off of one of their family friends. Her dad's eleven hundred and fifty. He has a twelve hundred and fifty that he bought last year. So, like, are these all Beamers? Yeah, so like I had said earlier, so many Beamer bikes. My my fiance is German. She was born in Nuremberg, and they had always just kept saying BMW, BMW, BMW. You know, they're the sense. best. They're whatever. Um, and we had done a trip out in Colorado six years now, and I was on a eleven, a ten ninety, or an eleven ninety. <laughs> you guys with your fancy bikes. He's yeah, he's. <laughs> He's got a 1982 uh, Honda. So but my adventure I, motorcycles is over there, just uh, touring Japan. Yeah, he was on Living his best life. Yeah, he was on as one of my guests. Um, well, we were on this trip in Colorado, and we were doing just like you know, highway and gravel. And I was on a, I don't remember if I was on a 1090 or an 1190, and I just hated how top heavy the bike was. Really? And her brother, yeah, I I was not a fan. And I don't know if it's because they just had like a cheaper, I shouldn't say cheaper. I'll just say they had like a Shinko on the rear and it was just squared hey, out. Hey, hey. Well, it was a super hard tire that was like completely worn down in the middle. So when I'd go into a turn, it just wanted to dive or I'd have to like throw mm-hmm. it into a corner. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing I noticed was coming out of a, coming out of a turn, I felt like I had to like pick the bike up and I just wasn't. I just wasn't a fan and I thought it was the KTM. So Probably I had was. rode. Would have been better if it was a Husky. Yeah, maybe. Her brother um, was on a 1200 GS that he had rented and I tried it and I was just like, holy shit, I understand now. Long story short, I don't need, I now have a GS. I don't need another GS. Um, well, if somebody wants a GS, GSA, so as is clarifying in the comments, he just might be selling his, so oh, hit him up. I can't find this. Matt Roden, are you prepared to carry this live stream on your own? What do you mean? For 30 to 72 seconds. Yeah, I guess. It's, it's pee break time. It's pee break time. Guys, I pregame, so it's extra pee times. XT and uh, tell the people about, I don't. Back no, I can just, I'm not. I'm carbureted. No, I was just going to say, uh, Valkyrie, I had started, this would have been in 2012, because I was 18. That's when I got my uh, motorcycle license. The class, the MSF class I did was on a XT250. I think one day was on a T-Dub and the other day was on an XT250. And because I had grown up riding dirt bikes, I was just driving around doing wheelies the whole time and stoppies and messing around on it. And it was a fun bike. There was a lot of people that I actually recommend for like a first dual sport to look at an XT250. I had asked small man while tall man was peeing last time. I was just like, how do you guys ride with him? Does he have to stop and pee all the time? And the answer was yes. Um, no, it's only a drinking thing, really. No, that's not true because I hydrate the fuck out of myself before I go riding. 
and then yeah by the time riding day shows up i do i do have to pee a lot do you ride with a uh gather no because i have to stop and pee no (laughs) do you have a hydration pack on you Mm. Mm -hmm. 100 percent, yes that's where i hook my uh garmin onto you're i which pack do you have do you have the USWE, USWE, no, or whatever? No, it's just a, it's a Camelback. If I need you... to get one that's like an actual backpack because it really is like the one I have is really just a hydration pack. Sure. But I would like to be able to store like snacks and shit in the, in an actual back. I just don't have the space for it. But I'm not a big fan of USWE. Have you tried one? I'm not a big fan of USWE because of how terrible giant loop has gotten but what do you that, mean well listen i don't know this is a complicated they, conversation there's a lot sure, of crossover okay. but are they the same company are they the importer of them or what's the deal usui or giant yeah. loop so uh usui bought giant loop so okay. technically now giant loop is owned by usui okay. um i don't know the ins and outs so i only get like third-party views from reputable sources but i will say that like the owner of giant loop uh what the hell's his name uh i'm blanking but he was he's supposed to be per the original contract done and over with them by now not quite the case and they're kind of stringing them along and i'm not a fan of that um giant loops also suddenly cutting all of their prices on their products which, if I'm being honest, guys, oh, Ladle Sports out of here. Bye, Ladle Sport. If I'm being honest, in hindsight, had I not been riding with or talking to people who were Giant Loop fans, I would not have giant bought Giant Loop originally. I was not terribly overwhelmed with my round the world bags. Comparably, Moscow Moto. They, I don't know. I just, I don't know why I'm hesitating. I don't give a shit. It's not like either of them sponsor me. I feel like Moscow Moto out of the, the gate was building stuff designed around riding where like my giant loop bags, when I went down in Oregon, I, I dropped the bike once and it spun a little bit, but it, it wore a hole through all of that canvas and the bag itself. And well, also they're... the goddamn fabric, the and it's not fabric, but whatever, for round the world bags, that shit should be waterproof. And it's not. Like that is a heavy rubberized feeling. Oh, uh, it's a rubberized just... fabric. It doesn't have cordura on it. Like the yeah, whatever. The, the point is does. that shit feels like it should definitely be fucking waterproof. And I shouldn't have to throw up I was so mad at Giant Loop last year when I found out that th- those bags were not waterproof. Okay, well, just, let's uh, let's separate your angst for those and just look at the products. I think you because you you look like you have a long torso and broad shoulders. Thank you. Uh, okay, <laughs> I wanted no, so I rode with like a Camelback forever, and it oh. kept hopping. Oh, and I, I, the you sweet you whatever. Yeah. Dude, it works. Yeah, it because is... those are Swedes. Swedes I are would... built like I'm part Swede, I think. I don't know. I'm built like a Swede. I I've would consider getting one if I were you. Trust me. Just trust You're me. You're not wrong. Everybody's running Usweet products, so. Just. Uh, oh. Um. Uh. Mm. <sighs> Garrick, I'm going to pretend I didn't see your comment. I'm just going to skip right Oh, dude, see. that's been so obvious, though, to, like, just <laughs> is a normal person watching. You said it. You said it, Nummy. Yeah, that's been pretty obvious. From my point of view, I would just assume, and I know assuming isn't a good thing to do, but why can I not find Valkyrie on YouTube? I don't think she has Me? a YouTube channel yet. Well, she has to. Well, okay. She could have an account, but not a channel. Yes. Valkyrie, can you confirm for me? I am not aware of any content that she has created. Okay. 
Insta. She's on Insta. Yeah, she is on Insta. Hey, Naked Kayak's here. He said Rubbermaid tub strapped <laughs> the back rack. That's what his KLR has. Oh, I keep forgetting to freaking ask Naked Kayak. Um, do you want to go camping off the bike, the bikes this summer? Because I want to take you. Uh, I want to take you camping. Yeah, so Valkyrie says, I haven't started a YouTube just yet, but you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, I had just started doing my uh, motorcycle permit stuff. So somebody was like, oh, yeah, I don't remember who the lady's name was, but she's a motorcycle instructor and she's teaching the photographer how to ride. And I went like running over, like, I'm going to go listen to everything that this lady has to say because I'm super interested and I want to gather all this information because teaching somebody how to ride a motorcycle, it's not always as easy as riding a motorcycle. Yes. Bike camping. Uh, I don't have any gear outs though outside of my bike. Uh, naked kayak. Don't worry. I've got uh, a whole list that I can send you and it's all very reasonable, affordable stuff because you know. I'm not a rich man. So I want to circle back to the inReach thing because I just got a Zolio. Zolio? The yes. hell is that? It's a Zolio. satellite. It's a satellite communicator. Oh, oh, EO. Uh, go ahead and return yeah. that and get a Garmin inReach. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Okay, now that yeah. I'm looking at it. Return it and buy a Garmin in reach. Why? Because the connections and the number of satellites available are not as good. I did my research and I my my deciding factor was how fucking fast can I connect when my femurs snapped before I pass out. Zolio, not high on the list. Also, it's like big and awkward. It's versus Can you give me like one second? I'll be okay. back. I'm gonna go grab it. Okay, you do that too. Sorry, everybody. I'm going to go grab my Garmin inReach and we're going to hold them up to our shoulders and see which is bigger. Ha <laughs> ha! I found mine first. I'm more organized than that ADHD guy. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at. Get ready, because his is not this small. Let's test them and see who gets help the fastest. My motorcycle adventures, you're not wrong. I desperately, more than anything else in the world, want to stand out in the woods and just hit the button. But I feel like you get charged as soon as you make the connection, so I'm not sure. Like an old pager? Really? I thought they were bigger than that. But also, I I can two-way text and... Oh, this says two-way SMS text. But, oh, shit. Oh, no, guys. He might he might not be wrong. Um, Zolio definitely doesn't have the satellite communications, the number of satellites that Garmin does. Because I know I researched this. So even if the size is about the same connectivity of the I don't know whatever friggin satellite system that Garmin uses is much more effective and I know this because I researched it uh, the spot whatever is like the middle ground between their Zolio bottom to top Zolio spot and then Garmin okay go oh he doesn't have his headphones on yet okay hold it up to your okay. hold it up hold to your on. chest hold on I would oh, like can't find it I would like this to be on the record that that is the uh -huh. first time I have peed in the past six hours to your six in the past hour. That's fine with me. I'm not going to argue my pee schedule. I know it's slightly irrational. Okay. Bye, Eric. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Oh, look, Monocam Nerds, uh, but he's back. Uh, Garmin and Zolio both use... Shut shut up, Monocamp Nerd. Yeah, I was going to correct you on that. They use the same that. ones? No. I was I was going to correct you on that, but I wanted there, them to do it just to make it hurt. There is a reason that I didn't choose this one. 
All right. So you did ready? yours do the breadcrumb uh, trailing? Yeah. You want to reveal? Okay, hold it up. Go. I already did it once. No, you have to hold it against your chest so that we can oh. see size reference. Here, let me put on my U Sweet pack that you hate. Oh my Jesus. Um, I would like to say a thank a special thank you to Ben at Moto Camp Nerd for getting this shipment out to me very quick. And also for making a very informative video on how to mount your Zolio to a pack Is that it? Using this giant giant loop strap. Okay. Oh no, that's not it. That is it. That's so much bigger. Look at how giant that is. Look, if I were to... Oh, dude, my headphones are caught. It's so big. What do you mean it's so big? It's so giant. Dude, I my can't even mini realize two. that the this thing is The name Mini here. is in the name, okay? Oh, my gosh. Get over yourself. There's a reason that I... You know what? Maybe it was just popular opinion. All right, Ben, if you're watching this, if people he ask is. where to mount these, put put it on your chest. You don't feel it. If you put it up here, your helmet will hit it. Because it's so big and in the way. Okay, you put an in-reach up there, it's going to smack your helmet. No, I keep mine literally. It hangs right here. No issue. Wait, hold on. Do you keep it on a carabiner when you're riding? It snaps onto my. Uh, oh my god! For fuck's so sake! So it's hold just, on. just flopping. I can't hear you anymore. It's just flopping around the whole time. Jesus Christ! God in heaven. Okay, so uh, as per. The camelback that I wear. Oh, maybe I'm sorry. Maybe I was wrong. No, that's the way I was holding it up. Why right do there. your straps look so weird? Because it's a simple camelback. Ooh. Why are you such a hater? Side ADHD Man. side quest. Do you have an insulated hose? No. You need to get one. I will not argue that with you one bit because they are so much better. I had one when I was on the flight deck that had an insulated hose and ice cold water every time versus that gross hot blast you get where the yeah insulated hoses are better how is texting from okay can you show me how you text from that thing i do it from my phone on an app how is texting from the zolio it's super complicated from an in reach okay garrick so you can't what there's no screen on this you have to use the app oh yes Yes, here we go, Ben. Usually tell riders Zolio is really good for sending messages since you've got a dedicated SMS number, but InReach has all the bells and whistles and a screen if your phone is dead. Oh, so in an emergency, if you have to text, you can do it on the InReach versus. But I, I don't, dude, I, I always use the Garmin InReach app and it's super simple. Like I just text back and forth and the response time is I think the fastest that small man and I tested because I would go out in the woods on my own and I would text him and be like, all right, uh, I'm sending you this message and I would timestamp it. I think the fastest was like 45 seconds before he responded. Is, is that through, do you guys have to have the apps to talk to each no. other? I had to have the app because I was texting him through. 100% no signal texting him through the Garmin to his cell phone at home. Oh, well, you see, he doesn't have a response, so I'm just saying the Garmin's probably faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder how, uh, will the, um, will the Garmin choose for you? Like, okay, so, Satellite? so like this has a, um, it has a SIM card in it, so it will choose if it's going to send it over like Wi-Fi data or satellite based on connectivity. Really? So like if I were to text you right now, it would probably just send it through my Wi-Fi. But like when I go up to the cottage tomorrow and I'll text you where I don't have cell service. The only option. Satellite is connecting to a satellite. Ooh. That is an interesting... Okay. 
You know what? I was just curious. Zolio looks like a reasonable competitor. 100, 200 bucks, huh? 200 bucks, but I'm also paying, I went like their top tier well, yeah, that's, yeah. package, which was like 50 bucks, but it gets me unlimited. And once you talk about insurance for rescue is where things Dude. get a little murky. Yeah. Well, because so you can, you can still get insurance through whoever Garmin uses. What is it? Geo? That's that's who I have my yeah, that's who I have mine through. Yeah, so like I could still get trip insurance through them. It just wouldn't be billed from Zolio. Oh, well, I don't think I don't know if I don't know if mine's built in or not. It might be. But it's a yearly once a year I pay. I just click the button because I was like, that's cheaper than a thirty thousand dollar helicopter right. ride. Either way, the point is really here. Let's be clear. Uh, I don't know who McChicken is, but they know my first name. So, hey, hey, McChicken. I would say the point is if you're going to ride by yourself. You uh, need some sort of an emergency device. Communicator yeah, is 100%. Enough. Yeah. And I just found another great use is like our cabin doesn't have cell service. So just so I can let my lady know, Hey, mm -hmm. I made it up there. I can just send her a quick text. I mean, granted this thing's limited That's... to, I think 160 words. Ben, does that sound right? Yeah. Mine has a limit too, but still like here, let's it's... see. Uh, sideways stand says, yeah, $40 a year. Uh, are you talking about Garmin or Zolio? The point, though, is regardless, whatever you decide to go with, it definitely, okay. even if you're riding with a group, you yeah. should have one to make sure that somebody in the group has one. I really, I 100% that the only reason that I was able to get to a point of being comfortable on the twin of doing like off road stuff and not just like, for service roads, but like going up like shitty two track and actual like for me what I qualified as real off roading where like if something went wrong and I fell and fucking snapped my finger or a femur, I knew I had an emergency device that would get me out of it. I, every every rider really should have one, but at least one rider in every group should have one. And don't forget a. Uh, I guess I could see what I have in here. But yeah, no, you're you're not wrong. I definitely need I need something more than the little Camelback that I have. Hmm, weird. The hell is that? Oh my god! <laughs> I use that, that to wipe. I I use it to wipe down my. Well timed. I know. I use it to wipe down my grips and uh, my visor. What else do I have? An extra pair of gloves. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, you don't care Bye, about my Nikki kayak or registration for my other bike. I need to be carrying my registration for my bike. Oh, just a little mini first aid kit. Mini first aid kit. I. I feel like I have a speed stick of deodorant. No. Um. What's the stuff called? Yes, JB Weld, just in case I smack mm. something bad. Mm -hmm. And then just like the normal snack. Oh, what's this? Lens cleaner. <laughs> BMW. <laughs> uh, I feel like Ben should know exactly where I got all this stuff from, too, because he was there. <laughs> yeah, bare necessities. Yeah, I'd rather pay what 20 30 dollars a month after putting the initial investment in to whatever you decide to get because zolio garmin spot it doesn't matter well it does somewhat i feel like uh, which apparently zolio and garmin are on the same uh the mini two on the same uh iridium iridium, I'm, iridium. I think spot is on the different iridium network. uh spot spots definitely on a different one and it's very much so subpar. Spot was out up front in my research. Uh, the there's the Garmin Mini is on a different setup than the Mini 2, though. 
So the Mini 2 is a lot more responsive because I was like, well, maybe I'll just get a, a used Mini 1. And then the second version, there's a lot more satellites under whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Fucking whatever SpaceX situation. Uh, so I ended up going with the, the Mini 2. But if you're unsure about riding on your own or if you're generally just maybe out in a group but nobody has one buy one like yeah i think if you're gonna go it's not even if you're gonna matters. ride by yourself if you're gonna go somewhere that has spotty service whether it's cell coverage or like you know just first responder coverage Ooh. just in general it's a good yes it's a good investment it's a good safety net i 100 percent agree uh so moist organ says how much in the way of tools do y'all bring in a moto camp i know lots of folks who bring next to nothing and trust in jesus i guess i'll let you answer this first hold on i want to come back to this okay so Can i'll you... answer this first yeah so i have a full-size tool roll that which again i have a new bike so i i'm re-gearing in what's in that any maintenance that i do that i did on the africa twin that went in the tool rule. uh oil changes uh tire tire changes uh for a while i was i'm gonna stop doing this it's gonna stress me out but realistically i've never broke a chain I'm going to stop bringing my uh, PBR tool, which is for chain repairs. But I have a tool roll, and any any maintenance that I do, if I need the tool, it's going in the tool roll. The tool roll goes on the bike. And therefore, theoretically, anything that happens on the trail, I'm going to have ready to go in a tool roll outside of i think the only thing that's not in the tool roll is my air compressor which is from trail tech the baja no pinch tool and then my two uh front and rear 18 21 inch uh tubes so i i'm a chronic overpacker but also like if if something goes wrong on the trail if i'm capable mechanically which i've yet to come up against something that i'm not comfortable with i was a little unsure about the suspension so i went and had somebody who was a real professional show me how to do it and now i'm like okay well like dope i feel like i could i could do that but any issue that shows up on the trail in that one tool roll i have it ready to go slightly overkill possibly but i've got every tool i need and it's in a small little roll easy i like it yep. i was gonna chime in as a you know as a mechanic yeah um, i don't bring anything with me more than i need just to get out does that make sense yeah which probably you're packing probably half the weight that i am right like realistically but you also have so i'm i'm going on the basis of self-taught right. versus like you actually know the realistic possibility of right. what you'll need versus I'm just like, it's not that big of a tool roll. So like, right. I'll just pack this extra weight. I would love to half size my tool roll and be confident in that. Like the way I look at it is like, okay, if you, you know, there's certain bikes like a, like a tiger, right. That have more of the gooseneck style. They have the mm -hmm. TFD, the headlights built in with it. I've seen a couple people snap those off because I had the Carl moments of like, what is Matt taking us down and broken bike. Okay. That side quest is done. Um, you don't need to have like pieces of aluminum and self tappers to put it back together. Like literally yeah. just a bungee or a ratchet strap to hold it on. Um, so, and that's I, so, uh, to, to, to topple onto that point. So for a while I was bringing like my first year because I was really, and I have, I have grown up very mechanically capable with vehicles. 
Sure. But I, when I first got into motorcycles, I got really obsessed with like the concept of like torque specs, making sure all of that is right versus just feeling it. Because for some reason, motorcycles have, I don't want to cut you off here, but just no, 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 go personal. I don't want to say personal because it's more than that. We'll say professional experience is someone that works on vehicles day in, day out at the dealer. On a motorcycle, those torque specs and recommendations to use See. thread locker 100% matter. God on, damn it. See, so you're about to fuck but, up my whole on, statement. Hold on. Hold so, on. What, it's on, it's very <laughs> subjective. Okay. So, so like I was about talking, to say, hold on. I was about to say, for the first year and a half, I carried my fucking torque wrench with me. And then I was like, well, I can feel it and it's fine. But now you're fucking that up and I have to include the torque wrench again. No, hold on. Hold on. If you're in a situation where you're just like out on the trail, I would probably take your torque wrench and like throw it in the nearest pond or stream. And I'd be like, dude, you come on. Okay. You just got to get out. All right. But you if just, we're. You just have to feel it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have two conversations at once. If we're talking about doing your own maintenance. 100% use a torque wrench in use the garage. Thread rocker. Yep. Yes. On like mission critical stuff. So like trail side stuff just to get home. Yep. It doesn't matter. Yes. Brakes, yes. suspension. If we're talking like hand controls, just if you're worried, put some thread locker on it. And better yet, if you can get a nylock nut, like say the bolt sticks through, put a nylock nut on it just to be safe. Because I've seen a lot of clutch perches and um, front brake mount screws. And bolts just yes. rattle their way out. So if you can at least do that as like a little bit of safety, do that. But on the trail, like just keep it simple and be realistic. So like for the KTM, I'm probably, I'm going to be honest. I'm probably not even going to carry anything, <laughs> but if I were, so like the Beamer, I obviously don't need a master link for the chain, but I'd carry a master link. I would have tube for the front only. Because if if it's in the front, I can make it fit in the rear. Yes. I need to. Yeah. Yes. So, and then. Yes. So like, hold on. Let's expand on that for anybody who doesn't know. So the the running understanding in the adventure motorcycle community is that you can use a 21 inch uh, tube for both front and rear. Now, your rear is typically a 17 or an 18. But your 21 inch in an emergency situation, you can throw a 21 in a, an 18 rear and it will get you home. 21s are a lot thinner and a lot easier to store than that big fat ass 18. So two 21s or even just one 21 and hoping that shit doesn't go wrong twice. One tube will get you home. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Um, so, okay. We've got like tires covered some way to mm -hmm. inflate it. Yep. Whether that's a combo I... air compressor, jump box combo. My personal yeah, preference would be an air compressor that you can plug into the bike because you're not going to get any fade of amperage dropping. Yeah. Um, I thought that for a long time, but I do really love my trail tag. I just got to make sure it's charged. But again, ADHD, I obsess over all sure. those little things in the steps ahead of time. I make sure it's charged before I go. When we were in Ohio, there were a lot of pinch flats. Um, and it, dude, it's just so easy to be able to just plug that thing into your, someone else's bike if they have it. <clears throat> yes. Start it up and it, it'll That's... just fill it up way quicker. Cause we were, si I think we sat there for like, 15 minutes to get one tire filled up with one of the Jesus. the handheld ones um they just they're not i'm not saying don't have one in a you know in a get you out of their situation it's probably yeah. the better bet but if you have this the space i would pack a larger air compressor personal preference oh just lane's out of here bye just lane tire yeah, I, I had the tire irons okay you were talking about air compressor. Oh no, I was just gonna say I had the uh, the hardwired plug it into the accessory, whatever the hell that's called for a while, and I loved it until it died. And then uh, Trail Tech, 
I don't even remember how I ended up stumbling onto their their air compressor, but I've been using it for a while now. And it's, again, as long as I, which could be an issue, right? If you're not going to remember to do all those little steps, but I'm obsessive before I go on a trip, sure. making sure that this, 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 and this are done. All my batteries are charged. All of my uh, my air compressor's charged, right? Like I've gone through my entire pack and I've made sure everything's there. Like I'm, I am up borderline obsessive compulsive about going through top to bottom every little thing from my making sure that my, like the fact that I took, I don't even know where the fuck it went now. So I'm already stressing about it. My inReach is on my hydration pack to making sure that you know my uh compressor's charged like i'm i'm a freak about that stuff okay so we've kind of got tires covered as far as like a spoon if you can find something dual purpose like it has a spoon on one end but the other end is like an axle nut socket that's really yeah, nice the more the better that's a good way to cut down weight mm -hmm. so you don't have a spoon and an axle nut wrench. Um, zip ties to hold body panels on. My, my personal feeling is if you wad up your bike so much that like a fairing is hanging off, <laughs> just rip it off. Yes. It's, if it's already broken, rip it off, strap it onto the back of your bike. The also, other thing you can do is, this is going to sound really dangerous, bring something pokey, and this goes with the zip ties, so that if like there's a little crack in a seam, you can poke some holes in it and fish a zip tie through. I was going to go with zip ties for uh, tire changes. If you get the big, giant-ass industrial ones, yep, and just throw, you don't have to wrench them down, but loosely zip tie two or three sections of that uh, tire before you throw it on it'll keep it in the drop center and it makes putting literally any tire on easy dunlop get, 606 easy get the reusable kind they have a little yes. tab you can push down and pull them yes. out yes i need to buy some of those because They're, that's exactly what i want them for i'm trying to remember who makes them because i've used them just to get like if i'm working on a truck and i'm putting something on it like whether it's lights or a plow harness or Whatever. There are these reusable zip ties. They're like a stainless steel core, and then mm -hmm. it's like a rubberized plastic coating around it. That is that is the biggest recent advancement that I've learned is zip tying. It's really, it's three. So you've got relative. So the way you're supposed to change a tire for anybody who's unaware is uh, you're working from the opposite end of you. So the wheel, we'll say the wheel bottom of the wheel, top of the wheel, you're going to work at the top of the wheel because you're down here with your knees, right? So if you zip tie at six, four, and eight, and do that loose at the very beginning, so you've got both of those on the inside, and then you're working around to get that final uh, lip under the wheel. If you zip tie those, You've got both sides on the inside. The the bead can't seat. And then also just, you know, uh-oh, uh-oh, it died. Guys, hold on. The camera oh. died. I saw myself freeze. Hold on. And hopefully I'm back. He's lying. He has Am to I go back? for a pee break. And I'm back. He's back. So if you zip tie those three positions, especially with the Baja No Pinch tool, it's going to take you 15 minutes to change a tire. I'm down to 15 to 18 minutes, depending on the sidewall, the the whatever, the bead, the toughness of the bead. Are uh, you saying 15 minutes off the bike, new tire, tire swapped and back on the bike, or just to like yes. spoon a new tire? Yes. Okay. Yes. Pulling the axle, fucking wheel off, old tire off, new tire on, wheel back on. I'm down to 15 to 18 minutes and I'm giving myself that range because it depends on the tire itself, but I have changed enough tires for enough people and I have enough people reach out because this is like, 
It's my weird obsessive. I want to be good at it because one day I'm going to have to do a fucking trail side. So I've obsessively, ironically, I've never fucking had a flat tire off road. You better find something to knock on, man. Good job. My only addition is for anyone that hasn't changed a tire or has trouble with it. When you get to that last little bit to spoon over little bites, just little bites. It shouldn't be an issue if you have the, the tire still down in the drop center. Right. I mean, but some, some of those sidewalls and some of the, the beat is just so dang stiff. I have, I, at some point I posted in one of the many groups, I was like, who's got a really stiff sidewall? Because I want to see if I'm to the point where I'm actually at and if like my knowledge is accurate or sure. if I just haven't experienced the tire that's rough. And I had a guy reach out and he was like, oh, I've got, and it was like, it was like fucking 606s or something with a notoriously stiff yeah, sidewall. Yeah, I was going to say, like, try do it on a Motaz. Bring, I was like, bring them over. I want to do them in my, my garage. I'll, I'll change them for you. hundred percent. I just want to see if like my methods are down and he brought them over and I did it and I did it in 20 minutes and it was like a fucking stiff sidewall. But the focus was keeping that it's a hundred percent where it becomes difficult at the end is because the, the, the somewhere that bead has set it's not it's not the stiffness of the sidewall i have a whole i have a whole soapbox on this it's not the stiffness of the sidewall it's the way that the tire is set up in the wheel and the tools well, i would using. say i would say it's the stiffness of the sidewall because the sidewall you could also say the carcass of the tire being stiff makes the bead want to go and seat on the the bead of the wheel that's where the stiffness is a issue for zip people ties. that might. Well, that's why zip ties. Zip ties. Because you can keep it down in the drop center. That's what I'm saying. Instead of I, wiggling with your knees. If you're not taking the right steps, yes. But I th- I just, I, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, Garrick says 606 is tough for sure. That's the toughest one I've put on yet. And those Motaz, I've, uh, well, no, actually, that's not true because I put a f- two. I think front and rear. He ended up with Motaz. Uh, Small Man Moto. I did both of, well, I think. Oh, no. They did his front tire at Tour Attack. I did the rear tire at Giant Loop. But both of his were Motaz tires. And his rear, not difficult at all. Because, but again, I learned early on, I was lucky enough to learn early on the obsessive like awareness of if you're struggling, it's because the, the tire's not in the drop center. And that's 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 the biggest thing. 100%, that's the biggest thing is if you're not making sure that that fucking tire is 100% on both sides, bottom and front, or top and bottom, it's, yeah. Anyways, we've really... Front the ADHD. drop you center. Well, no, you got to make sure that fucking bead point. doesn't set because as soon as that bead sets on either side, you are going to struggle like a son of a bitch with getting that tire. But if you really make sure that both of those edges, top and bottom, are pushed down into the middle of the wheel, it's a hundred percent. It's easy. No. I mean, all the modern tire machines we have at the dealership now, they all have an arm to push. Well, yeah. Push yeah, it down yeah, yeah. and hold the the outer lip or the, the bead down in the drop center because it just that it pops on 10 times yeah. easier. No. Well, yeah. With a machine, it's easy. I have done 100% of all my. Me and well, it, it goes to your changes by hand because I want to be ready in any right. friggin situation. But I'm I'm adding to but your yeah. drop center yes. conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh man, you guys are ridiculous for watching two ADHD people interact. I think they like it. It's. I feel like I feel like I would be entertained watching two ADHD people talk. Well, it's so. it's good. It's good info because we just go on tangents, and they're like they're probably writing this stuff down. Honestly, 
I hope so. Because hopefully something is worth learning. Uh, guys, we're at 856, which puts us at uh, 2 hours, 57 minutes. And as I say it, 5 seconds. I, I love you all, but it's time to wrap it up because I have to work tomorrow like a friggin' chump. So do and I. What, dude, it's what? Midnight for you almost? Dude, I... I'll admit to you, I usually stay up until like 12, 30, 1 o'clock watching YouTube videos. <laughs> what time are you up in the morning? 6.37. Oh, dude, I'm... I'm the kind of person... Mighty that starts I, at 4.30 in the morning. Well, I, I know. But I'm the kind of person, if I if I sleep too long, my my day is ruined. Where can I... Hold on, wait, hold on. My... Uh... Oh... <laughs> I see what he's saying. Where can I find that machine on the BDR? He's being funny. The the tire changing machine is uh, somewhere two thirds in. So you're you're totally good. Yeah. Oh, it's only 1 p.m. over in Japan. Motorcycle Avengers. Oh, man. Motorcycle Avengers. I wish I could go to Japan. Guys, thank you so much for enduring this almost three hours of malarkey. Uh, Matt Roden, thank you so much for staying. I know we talked about. I, to be fair, I did not give you the out at one hour, like I told you I would. But it was oh, just I so wasn't fluid. I wasn't know? gonna take it. Maybe we should do like a tall men podcast. Tall I feel like we could... men, moto. Yeah, we can take on Ben and Grace head on. <sighs> <laughs> and zipping right over my own funny opinions, guys. Thanks for being here. Um, hey, for, for serious, it's not going to focus. Go buy a friggin' set of darn top socks, guys, and go ride in them. I, there's only 13 of you here. I will send you money if you genuinely feel like. My feet are not more dry than normal socks. You're going to ride in these things for a full day and you're going to get home and you're going to peel these socks off your feet and you're going to be like, holy shit, my feet are not gross and sweaty. Go buy a set of darn tough socks from Moto Camp Nerd. They are friggin' amazing. I really went into these things super skeptical and like, okay, but you want me to do these and I'm not, it's not going to go well because my feet are gross. It's the driest my feet have been in the last two and a half weeks of my life wearing these marina wool socks go buy them they're super great i love them uh you're all amazing thank you so much for being here one month to go and another (laughs) super fun live stream because i really live for these things thank you all for being here you're all great good night everybody all right okay bye